<sighs> Gibbs. They're causing trouble. Lay down. Oh, let's see. Good morning. Oh, man. My morning did not go at the speed that I wanted it to go. That's how I'm doing. <laughs> I'd actually intended to start the stream like two hours ago. But, uh, it's tough. I gotta get myself a better espresso machine. I had to go out and get coffee because mine is broken and was never very good. Let's see. So if I put this here... I was not there for 1982. Oh, you know what? Actually, I forgot to turn on... Oh, boy, I'm completely scattered here. I forgot to turn on my gamepad. <clears throat> now, the funniest thing about this is that I bothered to get music going, and then the very first game I load up has some screeching uh, noise in it that we do still, by law and by tradition, uh, have to listen to. And not at all surprisingly, it's just some public domain music. Anyway. <clears throat> oh boy. Okay, alright, so there is joystick support. I wasn't entirely convinced. It was, oh, okay. All right, now I can put the now I can put the music back. Yeah, uh, happy Easter. Apparently, I had no idea, but uh, I'm being told. Um, anyway, so yeah, I think. Uh, oh, there we go. I got myself a worm. Oh, okay. I guess I gotta go. Gotta go feed the. Uh... Wow. All right. This is um. This is Bird Week for the NES, except much earlier. Did Did Bird Week come out for the NES? I think it only came out for the Famicom. Now that I think about it, I might be wrong. <clears throat> well, that's interesting. Whoa. I fed them. Do I... Oh! I didn't realize there was going to be another screen. Uh, okay. Do... I assume the goal here is just to feed the, feed the chicks. Uh... <clears throat> I'm suddenly... I'm suddenly having a lot of trouble with, like, the, gr like language part of my brain trying to remember whether like what the what the term is for small birds i i know chickens are chicks but if you gun to my head i could not tell you what the correct term is for any other type of bird is it just is it just baby is it just baby pigeon this is gonna kill me this game's pretty cute You know, overall, this is fairly impressive, fairly impressive title for the Spectrum, and like, I don't know if the game is going to get any more mechanically complex. Um, right, whoa, whoa, I just got wasted. That was interesting. You know, I did notice that there was something in the flower there. I wonder if that's a bee. It's got to be, right? Yeah, I'll, birdlets works. Anyway, um, overall, I, this is pretty well crafted. Uh, oh no, I died again. I'm not sure why. Uh, overall, this is pretty well, pretty well uh, 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 crafted, and uh, I'm fairly impressed by that. I didn't expect <clears throat> something this solid to be my first uh, grab out of the bag, as it were. Um, oop. I do wish, all things being equal, I do wish that they had gone ahead and just used, like, um, 
Oh no, he died again. I wish they just used like a solid, you know, color for the bird instead of uh, white, because I feel like white renders most poorly in front of just about everything. But anyway, that said, uh, yeah, that was pretty good. I'm done with it, but that was pretty good. <clears throat> I guess I am curious how many, kind of how many rooms there are. I'm going to try this. I'm just going to book it. Oh no, that's right. Well, I was going to just book it, but it looks like it's going to require more effort than that. Ah, now I have a worm. Okay, we got like a castle out here. We got like a farm out here. Just micro. I assume that's a computer store. Uh, house. Oops. These damn helicopters menacing me as a pigeon. Oh, I also forgot that I had limited energy. And I wonder if when that runs out, if I just can't fly anymore or if I just die. I kind of feel like it's probably the second one. Oh, it loops. Oh, we could have gone left from the beginning. Okay. So yeah, I think that's the entire game. Which is fine by me. But yeah, now, anyway, the weird thing about that is, let me just verify, hang on, let me just verify this here, but, oh, oh, wow, I can attack. Okay, see, the reason I know, the reason I, I bothered to check for that is because the name of the game seemed really tonally incompatible with what it is. It seems like a, a pretty cute game about just feeding your, your little baby birds, but it's called Percy the Potty Pigeon. And I was wondering, like, is this just a misfire from, like, the weird British sense of humor? Or does this bird have the ability to poop on things? And the answer is that yes, it does have the ability to poop on things. Can it defeat a helicopter? Yes! I can blow up a helicopter by taking a dump on it. All right. Man, this was a gremlin game. They really, like, just came out swinging. I don't know what is up with those plants, with the flowers. Like, I don't, I, I don't know if that's supposed to be a bee up there or what. I can't attack it, but touching any part of the flower seems to kill me. So that's weird. I think I can hit the car either, which seems ironic. Oh, okay, yeah. If you run out of energy, you just, you just die. All right. Well, anyway, that was, uh, that was pretty good. Perestroika. Oh, okay. Yeah, it makes sense. Gremlin would have ported that to everything under the sun. That's that's how things were back then. Oops. Ah. Okay, this is getting tougher. Yeah, the premise of this game seems simple enough. I guess I'm just supposed to get to that sort of, like, coin or whatever it is over there. Um, and I guess these do... They looked random, but I guess they're not, are they? They are following a, uh, an animation pattern where you can tell how much life they've got left in them. Ah! Maybe not. Is that my last life? Yeah, that was my last life. Oh, no, it wasn't. I'm mostly just curious, like, if you look at the coins stacking up in the upper right there, which, by the way, that's a cute way to, uh, dim like, in uh, indicate which level you're on. But, uh, if you look at those up there, there's definitely limited space, right? So, ah, dang it. I'm kind of curious. There must be no more than, like, maybe eight levels.
Sorry, we're getting some music from the game here. Oh, thanks, Alex. <sighs> this is actually really funny because I have no idea where, uh, like, uh, uh, YouTube Super Chat money goes. No idea at all. Like, <laughs> I'm assuming that it, I'm assuming it accumulates somewhere, then I can, like, pay it out, but I don't know where that place is. <clears throat> hey, that was the, let's, I'm going to reload this. This is a very, very, uh, 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 uh ambitious opening, uh, uh, animation here. Damn. Whoa. Okay, this has got to be, like, based on a Spanish comic book, right? Hey, Remy Mon. Picking all the games with music today. Got like a Miami Vice jam going here. Yeah, I mean, is that, is that what it is? I guess it kind of is. Yeah. It, it does actually, there's like some pretty strong uh, demo scene energy going on with this track. Wow, this just goes. Okay, finally. Uh, Teclada is keyboard. Unjugadar, I don't know. I assume that's joystick. Ah. Oh. Oh, no. Is that, is that the number of players? Probably. Oh, there we go. Kempston. Uh, and then... Okay. Actually, very excited to see what this is. Wow, thanks, YouTube. Player one. Uh, oh, there we go. Wow. Oh, okay, there we go. I couldn't quite figure out the controls at first. Okay, so it's just a top-down it's just a top-down uh racer except you're on a bicycle. Wow, it's interesting that it's apparently like computationally more involved to do diagonal scrolling because it the frame rate just goes to nothing at uh specific angles. Ah, oh, shoot. Come on. What is going on here? Oh, I was turned all the way around. Energia. Yeah. Uh, anyway. Okay, yeah. I was I was just thinking to myself, like, man, my en my energia yeah, is uh, pretty low. Um, there's got to be items here I can pick up. And yeah, sure enough. There's just sort of cars kind of sticking into the road periodically. That's weird. Yeah, like that situation. Are we having a bike race in Mad Max? Like Fallout Three, you know, Fallout Three environment. Like, what's going on? Why are there so many blowed up cars? Well, not blowed up, but you know what I mean. Not moving. All parked at precisely thirty thirty degree angles. Always on the right side of the road. Man, that FPS drop is remarkable. I. Yeah, I, well, here's the interesting thing. It's not just the fact that it's doing horizontal and vertical scrolling. A 45-degree angle moves smoothly. 
but when it does a uh, when it does a more oblique angle, it moves slower. So if I move it if I move it exactly 45 degrees, it's fine. See the it, it, God dang it, the frame rate goes goes back to normal. But if I move at any of the intermediate positions, um, then it drops. So I've got to assume that you're using some sort of trick to achieve both uh, uh, horizontal and vertical scrolling that doesn't apply when they're doing uh, anything other than um, a slope of exactly one, you know? I wonder if it's calculating the motion at the same speed regardless of how long. Like, I wonder... No, cause, well, there's no RTC. I don't know how it would know how much time has elapsed since the last time it redrew, redrew the screen, so I don't think it can maintain the speed when the FPS drops like that. Sorry, I'm trying to I'm trying to play this actually surprisingly difficult game uh, and try and comment on it at once, and I am just, like, flubbing it. Uh, oh my god. There we go. Oops. You know, and I guess nothing really stops me from going back and getting this, uh, it looks like a purse? I'm not sure what that is. Anyway, this is, uh, uh, I, you know, when I opened this up, I was like, oh, man, this is this is going to be ambitious. This is going to be, like, immaculately crafted. And you know what? It is. Oh, am I nearly at the end of the course? Oh, yes, I am. Meta, meta. Man, I came in last. <coughs> Pardon me. Hey, Ben. Good evening, Ozone. Uh, yeah, let's... Okay, I'm looking up this game. It's from 89, which explains why it's so good. Um... So that was, that was Perico Delgado... I can't pronounce this, but Mal Malo, Amar Mal Malo Amarillo... Uh, but it says it's a game based on the Spanish champion. I'm guessing that would be Perico Delgado? Yes. Okay, so then what's the latter two words mean? Click. <laughs> hey, not geek. Uh, yeah, I usually do one on Sunday. Okay, so... Sorry, a, a little bit of backstory here about that last game. Uh, I will drop the name in chat. Um, and then I'll exp I looked it up, and I think I know what it means. So, Perico Delgado is the... Um, Perico Delgado is the... Uh, the person, you know, the licensed figure of this game is named after, uh, and then the latter two words basically mean yellow jersey, or, or, or something like that, and uh, it, if I am understanding this correctly, I believe it basically is like a, you know, the color the champion tends to be wearing. Oh man, the overkill soundtrack, I forgot about that one. I don't remember what that sounds like. Yeah, people are saying that YouTube is, like, giving them really strange resolutions for this stream automatically. I don't know what that's about. So, yeah, if anybody's having a, a rough-looking stream, remember to uh, uh, remember to bump that up. Hang on a second. I feel like the scale filtering on the chat that I'm using in the uh, OBS layout is not great. Oh, that's so much better. I don't know if anybody was looking at it, but the, the quality of the text uh, in, the, uh, in the, the chat in the video stream just looked awful. All right, anyway, um, so yeah, that was Pericle Delgado Melo 
Amarillo. That was really good. Um, I'm going to go ahead and put that in the interesting games folder. I'm, I'm kind of upset because of just how long I spent dunking on the Spectrum. I was talking about this last stream, but I'm, I'm going to keep on going on about it. Um, I was dunking on, on the Spectrum for so long because, honest to God, every time I loaded a game up for it, it sucked. And now it's like every time I launch a game for the ZX Spectrum, it ends up being like much better than it has any right to. Um, a whole bunch of these just making me mad about like how rarely you see a novel game these days, you know? Um, again, you know, it's what I always say. A lot of these are not necessarily good, you know, don't get it twisted, but they are at least trying uh, a thing that it feels like we've sort of forgotten how to do. <laughs> well, I mean, home computers in general, um, you could write anything for them, right? You know, you had direct access to the hardware. So there were no limitations on what you could do other than what you were willing to put into it. Um, and, and, of course, you know, the intrinsic limitations of the machine. I cannot figure out... If there's a way to jump, I don't know what it is. I'm just going to walk into something here. Okay, I am now being injured. Uh, man, I just... Yeah, so this is the sort of game that made me not like the ZX Spectrum. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, I just... I can't do it. can't do anything. Alright, well, next game... That was called Perico Jones. Goodbye to Perico Jones. Wow, what was the cheetah rat? Wasn't the video game crash largely a uh, uh, an American thing? And the ZX Spectrum was primarily a UK thing? Oh, wow. Okay, the Cheetah Rat was a wireless joystick with a really strange interface. Yeah, so, to Acrylic's point, right, exactly. With the C64 or a game console, God forbid, you had very specific ways in which you could interact with it, right? There were, you know, you had, like, sprites and tile-based graphics and... You had to work very in very specific ways within those, you know, uh, palette limitations and whatnot. The Spectrum just straight up, you had pixels. And the pixels could be any color um, that you, well, within the within the um, uh, uh, limitations of the, the attribute, um, the color attribute uh, bitmap. And like, once you once you get once you get past that right like if you're okay with those limitations then uh you just you have to figure it out right it, it presents it presents no particular suggestions about how you should make a title um i'm gonna drop a link to the cheetah rat in chat here and uh just go ahead and take a look at that because that is a real strange looking instrument. It looks like it's a it looks like it's a touchpad sort of device. Oh, it's probably like a membrane. Uh, probably like a like a membrane surface. Ugh, that looks pretty unpleasant. Wow, okay, I pulled up like some rando uh, Amiga game music compilation and wow. Uh, this is really just going places. Who did this? This is a David Whitaker track. All right, anyway, I don't have a cheetah rat, so... Kempston. Oh my god. Turn sound off. All right, what do we got? Man. There is no need for this uh, 
There's no need for this track to be going as hard as it is. I'm going to have to look up a manual for this game because, wow. I do not know what's what, what exactly is going on here. Am I? It seems like I'm occasionally eating these, but not reliably. And there's like a squirrel up there who's a real dick and is trying to drop nuts on me. What is this game called? I completely forgot since I loaded it. This is The Perils of Bear George. It's like, I see a weight... I see a weight gauge down there. Am I trying to get fat for the winter? Like, what's going on in this title? I can't... How do I... I, I don't seem to be able to reliably eat. Yeah, I think I'm supposed to be fattening up the bear. And I suspect that I only have a certain amount of time to do it. But, like, why does he only sometimes, oh, wait, oh, there we go, okay, uh, so I was pressing up earlier, but it was sort of inscrutable, the sprite was really hard to understand, if I press up, he points his mouth up there, there we go, I must have been doing that by accident, that must have been the only way I was eating any at all, okay, well, I definitely, oops, ow, The premise of the game now seems straightforward enough. I'm guessing I ran out of time. Yep. What? Okay, I was wondering if I was supposed to eat the skiers too. Okay. Huh. Oh, there we go hard to get him to move diagonally. Whoa. This is going further than I expected. Ooh, that's... Hmm. Okay, so. Let's try this again from the top. Eat. Chomp. Chomp. Ah. Ah. You gotta get the mouth in exactly the right spot. And of course, of course, it being a an 8-bit computer game, there's a lag between everything you do, right? Um, it's it's like an early animation priority kind of problem. Uh, we're like, no, he's he's busy doing the walkie. And of course, you know, in the NES era, we figured out that we shouldn't do that. That things should be input priority. <laughs> and then we unfigured that out again when we made like Red Dead Redemption 2. Although, of course, you know, that was for better reasons. Ugh. Ugh. Boy, slow. Boy, not fast. Let me tell you. He moves, he moves, he moves like the ever given. Right? That's a topical joke that people will remember in three months. Big Boat was stuck. Now nobody cares. Back to a normal Tuesday. I miss the I miss the Christmas atmosphere when the boat was stuck. I'm not reading chat right now because I am concentrating hard on catching these apples, okay? I need you to know. Getting pretty chubby wubby. I don't actually know if bears eat apples. I'm suddenly realizing I don't know the answer to that question. Are they omnivores? I will not see your answer in chat. So this guy can move up the hill, but he does so at a, gla a glacial pace, and only if you're moving forward as well. I don't think he slows down when you get fatter. I think he, uh... I think he stays the same. I wonder what those two little dashes there are. I have no idea. 
So yeah, I have no defenses against these guys, other than to just not get hit by them. And that's really hard to do, and then it throws me right back to the beginning. So I'm going to go ahead and say this is not a good game. So yeah, Perils of Bear George from 84 by Cheetah Soft. Not so great. One of the better pictures on the internet, the, the thing that got me thinking about this was just the picture of the polar bear that's just going nuts for the apples that are frozen into a big hunk of ice. And the joke was, how does a polar bear know what apples is? And that was pretty funny. And also, I've been wondering for like a decade now, how does a polar bear know what apples is? Anyway, all right. Next title. Uh, this is by Atlantis, obviously. This is from 89. Whoa, digging the uh, digging the uh, uh, power cycling. Uh, oh, hello. So what do we have here? Um, well, this certainly looks irritating. <laughs> oh, submarine! How did you get yourself in this situation? Oh, nice little animation when you change direction there. All right. Um, whoop. Interesting. So I have an air quantity. Really? What am I supposed to do here? Ow. Okay, I died and then spawned back onto something that killed me again. Hmm. That was exciting. Uh, oh. oh, interesting. Uh, you press space, the main menu, to start the game. Well, you can also press space anywhere else to also start the game. It appears. So... My assumption was that I was supposed to come up here. Aw, oh, damn it. But that kills me. You know, I'm, I'm going to probably go ahead and grab the manual for this one. I have the feeling that I'm supposed to have... Oh, god dang it. I can't go up there, right? Nope. I'm going to look this up. Look up a manual for this one. This is a Periscope Up ZX Spectrum. <laughs> uh, let's see. SpectrumComputing.co.uk People should speedrun ZX Spectrum games. I want to see an 8-bit computer game show up at GDQ. Alright, instructions. Okay, um... Whoa! Alright, let me just, uh, let me just skim the instructions for you. Here are the controls. Submarine, left, right, up, down, as normal. Press fire to launch scout craft. Then it's the scout craft, left, right, up, down, as normal. Fire to launch missile. Dock with submarine to pass control back to submarine. Wow. So apparently fire is M. But, it doesn't seem to work. Hmm. Let me just make sure. Is this the same? This is the right game, right? Yep, this is the right game. Certainly the game sounds interesting from the manual. I just don't have the ability to, to actually the ability to actually fire. Otherwise, this would all make a lot more sense. Joystick doesn't work. Hmm. This is odd. Give me a sec. Let me take a look at my, uh... Let me take a look at my, um... Yeah, anyway. Mm. QAOP, does that work? Oh, there we go. Okay. I, um... Wow, look at him! Looks like a little squid sort of thing. All right, there we go. All right, well, that was weird. So why are there two separate gauges? Well, I guess fuel, ah, damn it. Fuel could probably be refilled periodically. 
um, would be my guess. Whereas air is probably kind of a whole game timer. Um, that was a thing back in the 80s, wasn't it? Yeah, they're using a lot of uh, they're using a lot of memory to store that that sub. Well, actually, unless I can think of some ways they could use some uh, just sort of like drawing some lines more often than another and not others sort of tricks. Because remember, they're drawing every single uh, pixel by hand with the CPU, right? It's all artisanal. Okay, so we've got. Uh, oh God. I launched my scout craft directly into the ceiling. Now... Oh, I can't leave the screen with the scout craft. Ah, oh, that sucks. Alright, well I guess we can continue this way. Well, there's two. Here's three. Oh, it's a good thing I went this way instead of going back. Oh, we got squishers, squishers, crushers, etc. So I have three scout craft per submarine life. And if I lose all three, then I lose that submarine. Oh. There are other ways to lose the whole submarine. Ha 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 Dang it. Okay. Now that this is working better, oh, you know what? I can use a Kempston. I did not realize that. I did not realize there was an option here. Let me fix my joystick config. Think. See if this is any better. There we go. All right, so we can actually just send this boy out. That'd be a little easier. Now that I understand how this game works, it's actually a lot more appealing. Um, so which door is this? This is door number one, which we've not seen a key for yet. Hey, uh, thanks for watching. Um, I would like to do more of the Big Blue Disc. Uh, I guess I sort of fell out of the habit with it because it was, um, well, it was actually incredibly high effort to produce, it turned out. like. It was way more work than it looks like um, because it turns out that the difficulty of so I can't really do after the fact narration and arguably you know I I sort of the theme of that that series I was trying to do was uh, styled around like Crontendo if you've seen that and um, Dr. Sparkle much love for him but he also can't do after the fact narration all his narration is out of sync with the uh, uh, the actual events going on in the video and uh, I'm, I kind of look at that and I'm like, yeah, mood. I don't really know how to solve that problem. So I have to do the narration while I'm, you know, doing the actions. And it turns out that's logistically really complicated. Uh, and the other problem is I had a really hard time getting a keyboard that didn't come in a mic configuration uh, where you couldn't hear me tip tapping away um, as I was doing the stuff. So I kind of stopped doing it because I couldn't figure out how to make that work. Um, and I don't know if I'll ever go back to it because it was really, really hard. Um, <laughs> just incredibly tough. Wait, was Kelsey Grammer in Down Periscope? I used to love that movie when I was like 10. Oh, yeah. All right. Yeah, this game is, is interesting. Um, yeah, you know, Sonic Tooth, I assume you're referring to streaming uh, for the uh, Big Blue Disc thing. That is an interesting idea. You know, the whole thing with streams is just that it lowers the expected... Um, <clears throat> pardon me. It lowers the expected quality, you know. Uh, and that that does have the... Uh, oops, this is not... This is not what I'm looking for. This is a text adventure. Um, it lowers it lowers the expected quality and thus you know few, you know lower expectations. So another another uh, text adventure. So there is that advantage, but uh, yeah, I don't know. 
I can't uh, I can't decide. Um, well, this is a basic this is a basic title uh, in more ways than one. Peter Beardsley's International Football, 1988 by Grand Slam, who I've never heard of. Wow, this looks really involved. Number one. Is this going to be any actual play, or is this going to be, like, a horse racing simulator? Nope. Actual play. Oh, wow. Okay. I do not know. I'm pretty sure my goal is the one to the left. This is pretty good, all things considered. Oops, crap. Ah, dang it. Dang it. Oh, whoa! Oh, I got scored on. Uh, it's just F Lux. The teams are white and yellow, which on the you know on the stream and everything, yeah, it's gonna render uh, pretty similarly. Um, oh. Anyway, uh, this is from '88. At which point there were established conventions for like sports video games on game consoles. Um, so I'm not that shocked at how good this is but at the same time I am kinda <laughs> I'm I'm also learning things about uh, soccer here because um, it appears that yeah, if you kick the ball off the sides uh, I guess uh, uh, you know the play is over which makes sense but it never really occurred to me I just scored on my I just scored an own goal <laughs> So yeah, you can sort of charge up at the beginning, uh, decide how hard you're going to kick it, um, and uh, that's cool. Oops. Crap. Oh. Huh. Oh. Hey, I did it. Yeah, this is... This is not half bad. I'm kind of curious. Um, I'm kind of curious what the uh, multiplayer experience is like. But yeah, like I said, you know, there were we had figured out how to make sports games at this point on consoles. So I guess this isn't that shocking. Um, still a little shocking though. Um, I mean, especially given you know the machine that it's running on. Um, not that we haven't established that the Spectrum can do, there we go, pretty good smooth animation and whatnot, but, uh, I don't know, it's still impressive every time I see it. Like, the frame rate, the frame rate, the frame rate never gets that high. And, you know, all it, so, okay, here's a take. I don't like the Pico 8 very much. Um, several people here just nodded their heads or, or shook them. Uh, everybody else doesn't know what I'm talking about, but... I never liked the Pico 8. Uh, yep. One moment. Uh, well, I'm streaming, but what's up? <laughs> uh, wow, are they? I didn't notice. Are the crowd graphics good? Oh, wow, yeah, they're very good, aren't they? Anyway, so, if anybody doesn't know, the uh, Pico 8 is, uh, like a, I think it's like a JavaScript-based, um... Uh, vintage computer like it's not an actual vintage computer it never existed but uh, it is a uh, em you know emulated vintage computer that never existed so it has like very low resolution very limited color palette um, not a whole lot of uh, memory and yeah you but you can program in a modern language I think it sucks um, <laughs> much love to the people who made it and the people who write stuff on it at the same time I, I get nothing out of it. What I would like to see is a ZX Spectrum at twice the clock speed and or with a graphics chip and no other changes. Like, 
the only yeah exactly right like okay the pico 8 could be interesting now let me program it through modern tools because if you're going to give me something that's been modernized anyway uh just go ahead and let me uh it it, it bugs me um all and it the resolution on it is wrong it's too low for it, it, it it's it's too low compared to like the reality of any actual machine, if I recall correctly. It's a weird aspect ratio. Um, it's 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 just it's just nothing. I I don't want to be too mean, but it feels like it was made by someone who wasn't there for this, doesn't know what it was that you know people remember and value about these things and what makes them special, and. You know, obviously there's tons and tons and tons of people developing stuff for it, but it just rings really hollow to me. So, uh, at any rate, um, when I look at the ZX Spectrum, I'm really liking almost everything about it. Uh, uh, like, it, it's a really cool aesthetic and whatnot. I just wish that it was a little smoother, because it's so hard to... It's so hard to make out what's going on. Um, other than that, you know, don't change anything else. Uh, so, hang on a second. This is a... Uh... Oh, whoops. This is Peter Packrat. I think this one... Isn't this a known... Oh, yes, this is a known title. Uh... Yes. Yes. Oh, there we go. I don't know that I've ever actually played this. Like, I know this name. I'm not sure that I've ever explicitly actually played it. Oh, wow. Again, pretty smooth animation. I feel like if I if I get touched by that bug, it's going to kill me. Instantly. Because I don't see a health bar. And it's a ZX Spectrum game, so everything has to kill you. Wonder, do I do I slide down these? Yes. Oh, I can swim. Swimmy, swimmy. Guessing this is just like a collectathon. Um, but anyway, um, yeah, the uh, I don't know the. There is something to me very weird and like missing the point about making something that pretends to be an old computer but is intro but is is introducing its limitations simply by saying no you can't do that um instead of actually having some sort of design reason for why you can't do that you know the the pico 8 has no particular reasons for it to be the way it is and so they've relaxed certain limitations of it um, but the, but, you know, there's no narrative for why those things are relaxed or, or can be relaxed while other things are not. So, um, oh, this game looks like a collectathon. Um, you know, I'm going to pick things up, uh, whatever, not doing anything for me. Uh, Peter Pan, the adventure game. This one's, I'm guessing this is a text adventure. It also is not loading correctly.
Yeah, this was not loading so much, and I don't think I'm going to like it anyway. Yeah. Man, this is weird. Sometimes... Sometimes when I start up a game, it'll just, like, not recognize the, uh, it won't recognize the, um, like, number keys or something, like in this case, and sometimes I just have to, like, press it over and over and over, or, like, hold it down and eventually it'll recognize it. Let's see, what if I try and start the game? Yeah, see, that works. But I couldn't get it to acknowledge any of the other, uh, inputs. myself into a pickle. Cannot figure out what player two's controls are. Okay. Let me let me restart this. Yeah, so this is this is quite a title screen and it took me a moment to like to parse what the heck was going on and I only sort of get it. I do not know what handball is. That's that's not meaningful to me. So yeah, I can't get this to move. There we go. Okay, that's what it is. All right, so set that. Start game. One player. And her skill code? Wow. to practice. Oh. Oh, wow. Okay, so I guess I was playing the goalie there, which I didn't realize. And, uh, lots of frames of animation. There we go. I did it. Yeah. Oops. Oh, dang. Can I get up in time? Oh, uh, nope. Okay, this is made by an entirely different company and is pretty, also pretty well made despite, whoa, dang it. Uh, pretty well made, but has like very much the same feel. As the, uh, as the football game that I played earlier. Sorry, I'm a little distracted. Apologies. <sighs> I saved one shot. Okay. Can I... Can I not play the other side? Oh, wait. Now this says Peter Shilton's football. This said Peter Shilton's handball Maradona earlier. Huh. Wait a minute. This might be made by the same people as the football game I played. Hang on a second. It is. That's weird. Okay, so... Sorry. This game is is in this directory under two different names. There's a 1986 version and a 1987 version. The one I'm playing right now is the 87 version, and it's listed as being made by Bug Bite. The 1986 version, however, says it was made by Grand Slam, which is the group that did the uh, the football game. That makes more sense. Let me look this up. Did they change the name? Uh, yes. Yep, yep. There was uh, there was like an acquisition. There was an acquisition, and um, they uh, ended up changing their name. All right. Anyway, moving on. There's a 1996 Russian title here called Petrus. Can I load that? All 
All right, anyway. Tetris, Pentris, wait, Tetris, Pentis, Petris. There's a lot going on here. All right, what's Pentis? Oh, five of them. Uh, if I can figure out... Oops. I'm trying to figure out what my rotation keys are. Ah, no. I keep it in Q, which quits. It's not space. Very weird key, key definitions here. Find keys? I think there might have been. Redefine keys. There we go. Left, right, turn, drop, show next, quit, speed up. Okay. Let's do Petrus this time. Go. Two, three, four, five. Ah, this is a combination of both. There's both four block and five block. <laughs> Gosh. This is really cursed. <laughs> oh, man. Surprisingly easy to adapt to, though. <laughs> These are really funny. It hadn't occurred to me how many more options there were for shapes when you use five uh, squares instead of four. <laughs> Every one of these looks like a joke. Uh, I don't, I don't know if the Russian Speckies had the same layout. It's a good question. Seems possible. And drop that there, right? Yes, I can. Hey, this is cool. I'm digging this. Like, everybody has Tetris neurons that have just, like, been dormant for eons. Just sort of like, oh, Tetris, all right, I can do this if I have to. Like, maybe you like Tetris, but when was the last time you actually had to think about Tetris? This one's doing a lot for me. And of course, you gotta love the like the experience of going like, oh, it's one of those blocks, and it's a block that, of course, you are now familiar with, but nobody else on the planet has ever seen before. I would really love. There we go. I've been waiting for one of these for several several years. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and start filling out this line so I can clear it. Uh, do one of those and. I have nowhere to put this thing that's good. Damn it. I gotta clear a line here. Here we go. Yeah, I guess um, the weird shapes have a tendency to leave you with, like, dangling single blocks a lot. Um, that is definitely odd. Makes it more complicated. That's... I've never seen this one before. That's the first time I've seen that shape. Ah. Uh. Ah, oh, shoot. I should have flipped that one. Dang it. Wow, it's giving me tons of these now. Boy, I can't... Oh, okay. Yeah, I mean, there were certainly some reasons for Tetra instead of the other options. All right, that's pretty cool, and I'm going to put it in the interesting folder.
All right, next title. Petter the Pacifist, Petter the Pacifist in Mission to the Future from 1987. This is a Spanish title. O-P-Q-A space V. Got it. Oh, wow. Well, this sure is a Spectrum title. Huh. I'm guessing the goal is to escape. I only seem to be able to just sort of, like, project this field in front of me, but I can't direct it upwards. And yeah, I'm kind of curious how pacifist comes in here when I do seem to be murdering all these things. Uh, but, uh, hey, you know, uh, you never, you can never quite tell what you're being shown uh, in these graphics. Okay. Alright, we're making progress now. Ah! Oh, you know what? I think there's sort of an angle at which I can still vaporize them if they're above me. But of course, the low frame rate doesn't really help with that. Oh, shoot. This sort of weird isometric tile-based uh, map design was really a thing on the Speccy. Um, don't know exactly why, but it's just something about European devs just really liked perspective in a way that um, just was never as popular in the Japanese or American game dev world. There was nothing about the machines that necessarily made... Well, I guess top-down perspectives are easier with simple square tiles, and all the Japanese uh, um, you know, uh, game consoles were based around square tiles. So I guess the pixel addressable graphics didn't make that more likely. This is still very hard and not very good. Next title. Whoa. This is going to be a text adventure. Okay. Hmm. I wonder what this is doing. Wow. Oh, okay. I'm trying to find my buttons for going left and right, and it's not going well. What? I just generated a new a new dude. Oh wait, there we go. Boy, this is weird. If I could have read any of that German. Uh, all right. Let's move on to something else. Rabbit Software. Fantasia. I'm gonna define my define my keys. Right, down, up, fire. Oh, okay. Oh, wow. 
Okay, you don't you don't often see a Space Invaders just like, all right, you get a machine gun. Boy, this is weird. Oh, yeah, that was um, that was different. Let's uh, let's move forward here. Um, Phantom Club. Sounds spooky. Bellator. This is an ocean title. Oh god, no. No. Ah. Uh. Ah. Uh. These are so bad. There's just there's just no there's no excusing them. This one in particular, like I seem to be having a really bad time moving around. Again, champions of um uh animation priority graph uh movement. Also, as usual, I can't actually exit the room. Yeah, wow, okay, alright, next title. <laughs> oh, wow, look at that. That's neat. This is badass. Well, this is this is cool. Oh, I see. Hang on, that was a. I didn't realize that was a a menu. God, that is such a cool intro. I had to restart so I could pick the correct uh, uh, control device. Well, well. I thought... Hmm. Polish, right? I think? Might be wrong? Oh, wow. Uh, okay. I thought I was going to be flying a plane. This is cool. Just 
Check out this, check out this European Contra. I am out of ammo. Oh no. I'm not sure why I'm not dead. Oh, I actually have a life bar, that's why. Is that ammo there by any chance? Yes, it was. Not health, though. Okay, I, I'm i not good at this game, and I'm going to move on to another one, but it's uh, really interesting. And again, ambitious. Now this one is labeled as, by the way, that was Phantom F4. This is labeled as Phantom F4 2, but it has the same date on it, and I suspect that it's just a different, like, map set or something. I, I think this is supposed to be like my girlfriend waving goodbye before she takes off in my gigantic jet fighter, which is badass. Oh, well, maybe not. I don't know. Uh, I am using the Fuse emulator. Uh, there are several other emulators that I can't consistently get controls to work on. Um, Fuse is the only one where, you know, uh, I'm able to get the, the controls to, to seem to work reliably. Um, I also recommend, although you can get Spectrum games in both disc and tape format, um, I have had no success at all with the discs. Um, the tapes seem to load very reliably in Fuse, so... Wow, this game is incredibly hard. This is much harder than Contra, especially because you can't see the bullets and dodge them, you know? So yeah, whatever the story with this thing is, I'm going to switch to something else, but whatever the story uh, with it is, um, like, it doesn't, it doesn't, uh, it's not executed as well as I, I would have hoped, but uh, definitely still very cool. This is quite a title screen. This is fantastic. This is a Phantomus, Phantomaz, apparently. This is also Spanish. Um, this is a bop. My real worry with, like, Spectrum titles, <clears throat> pardon me, is that they'll have, like, a real bop at the intro, uh, and after a couple cycles, I'm going like, yeah, this is great, and someone goes, this is Mozart. Why don't you know that? Anyway. Uh, Kempston. Oh, okay. Oh, whoops. Uh, my joystick interface is not working correctly. Let me restart this. Oh. Weird. I'm having hella control issues with this. I'm gonna try cursor. There we go. The genre of, like, exploration game where absolutely everything hurts you and the goal is just to, like, get through a room, you've got no weapons, etc. The goal is just to get through a room without dying, um, and it's really basically, like, a platform game, um, was so huge. <clears throat> yeah, everything hurts me. The satellite dish hurts me. Why? I'm gonna guess I can't ride on those clouds. Wow, that was health. Incredible. I'm lucky to even have health. Oh, I can ride on the clouds. Shocking. Wah. Ha <laughs> ha. 
Oh man, without any of the other stuff on the screen uh, to, for the CPU to bother with, it moves so much smoother. <laughs> <clears throat> oh man, what is this? I wish I, I wish I spoke that language. What? Whoa! Whoa! What? 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 Hello? Okay, I'm going to try and just blaze through this again so I can figure out what the heck just happened there because that was fascinating. There was a lot to unpack. One thing that bugs me is I don't... Oh, whoa, there's long jumps! I didn't know that. All right, so let's pick up some health. Yeah, it turns out there's like high jumps and long jumps. Ugh. Difficult. Okay, can't get up there anymore. Oh man, Cameron, that's a good question. Uh, oh, shoot. Um. Well, uh, I mean, the point-and-click adventure, right, which was uh, monstrously popular and then became virtually unheard of, you know? Oh, just out of curiosity, is there anything... Nope, can't go that way. All right. Oh no! <laughs> I would really love to find out what happens next. This game looks very ambitious, but uh, um, the controls are just so awkward that uh, I'm not sure how to. That said, there's a second one. Let's look at that. I'm going to go with cursor controls again. Jeez. Okay, the fact that the game starts you in a position where you can get injured if you don't immediately... Wait. Are we playing Braid? Everything only moves when I move. What on earth? Has this been hacked? It doesn't say it has. That is weird. Oh, hey, 100. How's it going? <laughs> super hot. Super hot. I mean, it's definitely making things easier, don't get me wrong, but it's also very strange. I'm sure this is not intended. Um, let me load up. I have a couple other rips of this. Um, apparently this was also put out under the name Vampire. And this is a English translation. Hmm. Boy, this is slow. Oh, hey, Bites. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe there shouldn't be any key overlap, but maybe there is. Well, I'm using the cursors, which shouldn't be bound to anything else. Um, let me try this in Kempston mode.
Okay, so it doesn't have the problem in Kempston mode, but it's not reading the uh, joystick correctly. Um, all right, well, I'm going to move on to another game. Uh, this is interesting. I think this might be like a basic title. This is Fent uh, Fantomas and La... Fantomas and La Luna. This is from not the same company. I don't think a related game. Oops. This one looks really basic. Wow. Are there is there any internal logic to how things work here? Yeah, right? It does kind of look like a prototype. Alright, next title. Text adventure. Moving on. Phaser chase. That's badass. That was cool. Okay. Um. Gotta find my controls here. Uh, can't find my controls here. Okay. Alright. Next title. Some of these I just can't, no, you know, can't figure out the controls. I just move on. Uh, this is Phoenix. This is very obviously a Space Invaders. Gonna move on. Uh, Phileas Fogg's Balloon Battles. God, does that ever... That right there is just a prototypical... Oh, these were the games that I grew up with. Back in the UK, we didn't have Super Mario Brothers. We had Phileas Fogg's Balloon Battles for the ZX Spectrum. But let's see how... Let's see how bad that actually is. Once again, I cannot... Once again, I cannot, uh... Uh, interact with the menu properly. But we can define keys, so I guess we'll do that. Oh, what do we have here? Huh. Weird. Okay. Um, there we go. I couldn't figure out how to move. I'm still not sure how to move. How am I doing this? I'm pressing the keys. Nothing's happening. Hmm. I, see, I think I'm just getting blown around by the wind. Or maybe it's just really bad. So, I have this feeling that... Uh, I have this feeling that uh, there's a lot of ZX Spectrum games that don't emulate very well because of how they pull the keyboard or, or, or joystick inputs. I really suspect there's like a strong, like a really intense problem with um, emulation accuracy because I just have a lot of games where I'm like, there's no way this was like functional. But I guess it's also possible that I just don't understand the controls. Yeah, if I like, if I key smash here, I'll eventually take off, but I can't, like nothing is consistent. Um, okay, let me, let me reload this. Was there an option for cursors? No. Keyboard Sinclair. Can't, wait a minute. Right and up. Was I on the wrong? I might have been on the wrong input mode. No, because I was firing. Ah, whatever. Okay. Oh, well. Next. Is this like a text adventure, but multiple choice? You alert the thugs at the main gate. They take you to Hamster Chief. Badger is not pleased. What is going on? This is Phineas Frog, by the way. So it's just like a choose-your-own-adventure, really, with little animations. Yeah, it's a twine game. That's true. This vast and smelly kitchen is no place for a frog. Pick up coffee. The cook has gone out. Okay, I'm going to move on. 
Um, bup, 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 bup. Phoenix. Uh, that's another Space Invaders. God, Space Invaders was a hit. Text Adventure. Pie in the Sky. This is going to be your basic don't get hit by things. Yep. Okay, next. Pie there. Kinston Joystick. Whoa. What? Whoa. Okay, so... Okay, so the goal here is just to turn everything blue. Okay, there we go. I do have a jump. I couldn't find a jump at first. I'm guessing those guys are going to kill me. What? Why did I... Sometimes I just get shot. iRobot? Is this iRobot? Is this a clone? Oh! Oh, I didn't notice that I was closing. Okay, now I get it. Red light, green light. Ah. Yeah, I mean... Did Jeff Minter write this? I mean... <laughs> no, shockingly, he didn't. Okay, I am going to check one more thing before I finish, which is... Does this thing kill me? Yes, it does. Oh, man. Pain in the ass. All right. Next title. Whoa. Oh, that one didn't load correctly. Piebald. There's a lot going on here. There's a lot going on here on this page. Uh, this is made by Automata UK, which is the same one that did Pi there. So is this a clone of something as well? P.S. There is someone else. Man, this is weird. This is real weird. Also, I can't move on. Hmm. 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 Well, okay. This is a 1991 Ubisoft title. Well, I guess 90, it says. Wow, okay. Uh, joystick, one player. How do we start? There we go. Whoa. Okay, must be using the wrong joystick. Okay, let me try again. Put it on keyboard mode. Okay, there we go. Okay, so this is a... This is a matching game. Oh, we can just sort of move them wherever? Huh. Confusing. So is it just... Any two stacked? Yeah, it's any two stacked. Okay. Huh. Wait a minute. Hmm. 
Yeah, okay. Uh, hmm. Well, moving on. This is another title from Ultrasoft. This is Pickout 2. Don't know where Pickout 1 went. Oh, rough. music is a bop. That's really good, but I do have to move on. Eventually, we have to move on. <laughs> but man, I don't want to move on. Uh, all right, um, Jedin, of what? Devaja, Uh joystick. Oh, that's oh, it is Kempston. Is this literally just a match two game? It is. It's just uh, the Super Mario Brothers three match two game. I don't know. Boy, if I do this enough, do I uncover a picture of a naked lady? Unsurprisingly, the only interesting thing about this was the intro music. Moving on. Pickpocket from Gemini Mark. Whoa. That's rough. Okay, Kenston works. ZKXM. Oh my god. Oof. This is rough. Cop game. Next title. Pick up sticks. Hmm, I wonder if this one's a basic title. I actually have no idea how many of these are, are basic titles. My guess is, is many. Okay, this one definitely is. Ugh, rough. Uh, da, 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 da. One moment. <sighs> Sorry, I got really poor sleep last night. Hardly anything. Text adventure. Okay, moving on. <laughs> Here's another Automata UK title called Pie-Eyed. Again, like, again, like, very strong, very strong feeling of um, Jeff Minter energy from this. Um, as far as, like, it really feels like they just have the one guy over there, and he just keeps going, you know, he's just obsessed with this one little in-joke. Press any key for a game. It might not be this one. Oh, jeez. Is this... The Gay Dog? I know, like, several hundred of those. Oh, my God. Seriously, this has incredibly strong Llama Soft energy. Ugh. Uh, can you imagine paying for this? Someone must have bought this, right? Just a 1984 Infinite Runner. Drinks zero. Oh man, maybe there's more to this. Ah! <laughs> Uh, 
Can I go into the... Oh, I can go into the pubs. That's what's going on. Oh my god. Holy crap. Ah, it's so hard to control. I can't... I'm having such a hard time going left or right. Okay, again, I really strongly suspect it. Oh, there we go. It's not pulling the keyboard correctly. Okay, so... Is there a toilet just hanging out in the middle of the room there? Is that... <laughs> this kicks ass! <laughs> Okay, I've had five drinks. This is a game about uh, pub crawling. Absolutely. Sorry, I, I didn't mention I switched to the joystick, and now it's working a lot better. Although it's still really janky. Like, I could tell that if I were able to give it just one frame of input, that I could get down there. But again, I don't think the act. I don't think the emulation is quite accurate. God, that's annoying. The horse and bucket. <laughs> this game whips so much ass. I can't believe I talked. Cr I can't believe I was. Uh. Uh. No, I want to go to the gay dog. What about the video pit? Dang it. Give me a pint of special and a packet of Rhino Crisps. Does anybody have the... Does anybody have the deep deep background on what any of that means? Come on. Ah, I didn't get to go into the gay dog. Um, yeah, I, I don't think it's debouncing the, the, the stick, but, um, I don't know. I'm not sure... I'm not sure the Spectrum was capable of that. <laughs> oh, man. Chips. <laughs> I'm just... I'm, we're playing this for the rest of the day. Okay, we're back. this be any more abrasive? Oh, wait. I can eat the... Whatever the yellow things are? <laughs> I've never encountered anything I would describe nearly so much as inscrutable. <laughs> I couldn't eat those earlier. I swear to God. Can I... Is there a back room? Nope. Okay. Music with a with a K. Ah, uh, I don't. Why? Why does he do that? I'm just pressing one direction. I'm on it for the best software in town. Oh, absolutely. The horse and bucket. I don't have any idea why he's running around in circles like that. I'm not doing any of those inputs. Once again, I can... Ah, it's so broken. 
I have the feeling the game was like this on the real hardware. I have everything it would take to get this loaded on the real hardware, and I'm like, turbo curious. I don't have my Spectrum here, it's over in storage. I still want to go into the gay dog. But I never, there, I always get hit by a car whenever I try to. Okay, okay, oh, there we go. Finally, we're in the gay dog. Did it. I gotta put this in the interesting games directory. Wait, I can't. Oh, there's one more drink. I cannot pet the dog. I suspect it would kill me if I tried. Video pit. Man, I think we've been almost everywhere. All right. Oh boy. Oh man, that's incredible. Um let's look this up. Automata UK. Um Okay, they were they only existed for 3 years. I'm guessing these games were all made by completely different people, but let's see. So Wikipedia has a page on this and Okay, so they had a mascot called a mascot. They had a mascot called Pie Man. A pink humanoid with a large nose, the protagonist in many of their games. Uh, designed by uh, the two guys named Croucher and Penfold. Um, wait, there were a bunch of cartoons? Yeah, so, okay, this is what I thought. So, this was a thing that was going on in the, uh, in the 80s a lot. Um, they would just get, like, freelance... They would just get like tapes would arrive. I'm 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 inferring here from the wiki page, right? Um, but uh, it sounds like just they would just receive tapes or somebody was like, hey, maybe publish my game, and they would just write them back and be like, all right, we're gonna change a bunch of stuff so it's about Pie Man, but otherwise we'll just put this out. Um... <laughs> Man, yeah, I wonder what do the Pie Man tunes look uh, look like? I somehow I expect them to just be incredibly filthy. Um, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to drop a link to a page I just found in chat here for later perusal. I guess this is a digitization of Sinclair User, a magazine that existed at some point. So like, there's a whole thing going on here, whatever this is. Um, yeah, I don't know. Um... This this is a whole rabbit hole to go down, but yeah. Anyway, there's this is like one dude who's responsible for the whole culture of all the software that comes out of this company. Very weird, very weird. All right, um, that was what was that pie eyed? I think it was. Let me let me reset this. Uh, I'm pretty sure that was pie eyed. Yes. All right. I am putting that in the interesting games folder. You know, it's funny. The whole... Wah. Uh, so loud. The whole conceit of this project, right, where I'm going through these ZX Spectrum games, is that someday I would like to put out a video that's about ZX Spectrum games. Um, in depth. The way that I'm Analyze them on the fly here, but cleaner, you know, more suitable for general audience. And I've been doing this for much longer than I've been, sorry, much longer than I've been streaming it. I've got 89 games in my interesting games folder, right? And I do find myself going like, how am I going to condense these into a video or a series of videos, 
right? I'm going to have to play everyone again, write a narrative about it, and it's going to take up a lot of... Um, it's going to take up a lot of, of energy if I'm ever going to actually do this. Um, but I would like to do it because as fun as the streams are, uh, you know, I, the whole point was to, uh, uh, was to actually produce a, a finished product. And I'm curious if I'm ever going to make it happen. This is Piggy. This has, a uh, like, MSX energy. By the way, I need to, um, that's another thing, actually, is that, um, uh, a thing I used to do on stream over on my Twitch when I had one of those, or when I was doing that, uh, is I would uh, I would play uh, MSX games, and I love the MSX. Um, whoops, huh? There's some technique where I can attack these like Pac-Man ghost things, um, but I don't quite understand it. Oh, I see. If I uncover those guys, they sort of they just sort of shoot out after a moment. Yep. Wow, that's weird. Well, this game is strange. Oh, it's great. Oh, it's Boulder Dash. Oh, okay. I mean, it isn't exactly, but it basically is. Yeah, there we go. Get stomped. Yeah, so this is just a really weird twist on Boulder Dash. It's a new take I haven't seen before. Oops. <laughs> just grab the money. Uh, oh, I don't know. They kind of look like the... They kind of look like some uh, 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 symbology from the never-ending story, if I'm frank. It's hard to parse those as pound signs, but I guess they could be. Oh, no. The idea of, like, what if we put bad guys in Boulder Dash? I'm asking myself if I've ever seen it before. I don't actually know that I have. Oh no, he responds right there. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, <laughs> no. Oh, hey, I did it. Woo. Whoa. Hey, this is good. This is good. This is challenging. Eh, I got hacked. I think, um,. I have seen, I have seen in, in my perusals of games of this era, I have seen so many Pac-Man clones, Defender clones, Space Invaders clones, et cetera, you know, et cetera, right? And uh, once in a long, long, long while, I'll come across one that takes the formula and actually adds something to it. My favorite was a title for the... Japanese PC-88, that's what I was going to say, not the MSX. I used to do PC-88 game streams. And I'm going to be perfectly honest with you. The reason you're not going to see them on here, the reason I was doing them on Twitch and not here, uh, and, and probably won't do them here, is you cannot, you cannot just drop in ROMs into a Japanese computer on a live stream with a lot of people watching. You just can't. Gibbs is here. Because the thing about Japanese computer games is that about 15% of them have bare tits and uh, at a minimum. And there's just no... It's not like, it's not like other uh, game markets like consoles or PC where those games have been cordoned off into a adult games category. No, they're just there. And I can't have that on my <laughs> YouTube channel. Uh, as much as I would like to be the guy who was doing that, um, I just don't love the idea of getting kicked off of YouTube for it. Um, and, it, uh, you know, ruining uh, everything else that I'm working on. I was doing it on Twitch because I didn't care that much about my Twitch account, um, and also because I had a pretty small audience. It was like 15 people at most, and they were all people who knew me. But I just can't do 
like, whoops, turns out we're playing a hentai game in front of a completely public audience. It just isn't an option. So, um, anyway, but for the PC-88, I did find a, a number, uh, and and I will eventually do a video on the PC-88. I actually, um, I tried to. I have a, you, you know, like, how, how in-depth my, like, history of video video was? I had a script of that size written up for, like, Japanese home computers, um, and I had started working on it and made lots of progress, and then um, the scale of it just got to be too much. And I also realized, and this was the bigger problem, I think, that I hadn't gone through and, and, and found enough titles to necessarily show off. Um, and so I decided to start going to Twitch and start doing these streams where I would just drop in random PC-88 games. I had a stream deck on my desk with a button I could press that would just put instantly superimpose a huge whoops banner anytime the anime titty ended up on the screen. And, um, and, uh, 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 so I went through a whole bunch of games and I found a bunch of games... You know, I have an interesting games folder for PC-88 as well uh, that has a whole bunch of titles in it. I definitely have enough material that I could go through and do a, a video on that now. I just haven't because it's so much work. Oh, hey, good. Oh, God, I was wondering what happened with revision. So I had heard distantly that something happened last night. Somebody was just like, oh, oh the whole revision thing. And I'm like, what was that? And I went over to their t uh, Twitter and their most recent post is like, hey, we're having a revision today because we deserve to uh, enjoy and uh, vote without being rudely interrupted. And I'm like, what does that mean? And then I scrolled back and I found, well, hey, so if you're wondering what happened last night, uh, our guy, this guy, and this other guy are live right now. And of course, it was six hours ago, so I, I couldn't watch that either. So I'm sitting here going, what happened at revision? <laughs> oh, my God. So they, they actually got banned from Twitch. Are you serious? Well, I mean, to be fair, uh, Steven, uh, nobody's ever been brought up on charges uh, for showing blood, uh, whereas entire businesses have just been completely eradicated by the government thanks to pearl-clutching uh, uh, Christians. So, uh, you know... Uh, it I don't think we can necessarily blame Twitch in this case. Um, being that literally every other business that they interact with would uh, sh uh, immediately cut ties and plunge them into bankruptcy the microsecond that they said, nope, you can have a bare titty on here. Anyway, I thought, I thought about running my own service for this because it's not hard. I actually have my own private uh, restreamer. Um, or I can do uh, streams that are, don't aren't recorded, and nobody has you know nobody has any control over them except me. Except they're hosted off of my ISP, and I'm like, hmm. Well, see, I have the same problem Twitch does, except that I'm a person instead of a corporation. So if I get brought up on charges because, say, a minor wandered in and I didn't check their ID, uh, then I go to prison. So anyway, good times. Uh, but what I was going to say is that on the PC-88, I found a number of games that were uh, interesting twists on common titles. So Pac-Man, but. Uh, Space Invaders, but. And um, actually one of both the funniest and uh, most innovative ones that I found, I described at the time simply as, what if you gave Pac-Man a gun? <laughs> and I'm, I... I loved it so much. I want to do a I want to do a, a thirty uh, a, a thirty minute video just about that topic. I want to do like a um a Tim Rogers video about just what if you gave Pac Man a gun. The bandwidth needed for fifty streams is actually not very high. Uh, I have uh, a gigabit of bandwidth here at my house, and I did the math once and found out that each of these streams is only consuming. It's like. I don't know, uh, maybe like 8 to 10 megabits. If you do the math, it's like, oh, <laughs> I could host quite a few. Um, yeah, it's like 125 people, which, I mean, I've never had that many on my YouTube, you know. Um, now, the moment that you break a gigabit, it suddenly becomes very difficult <laughs> to figure out how to... Uh, how to how to how to move to that next level without a full professional CDN and everything, but 
at any rate, um, yeah, uh, just uh, porn is illegal. Um, porn is illegal in this country. Uh, it, it always has been. And I am just constantly astonished that people will be like, oh, I don't get it. Such and such person, you know, got uh, raided, got shut down, got their PayPal account pulled for, uh, for, for doing porn stuff online. I'm like, it's been this way for 20 years. And before that, it's been that way for centuries in this country. I, I what what about this was shocking? You just can't do that here. Porn is illegal in the United States. Who doesn't know that? Come on. Anyway, uh, so that was Piggy, nineteen eighty five, from Spectrum Computing. And what's interesting is that I have another title in the same folder uh, called Piggy from nineteen eighty eight from Bug Bite. Let's see if it's a republished copy of the same game. Oh, it's got a better. It's got a better uh, title screen, if so. ZXKM. Instant joystick, and it, again... See, okay, I am hammering the number keys. One, two... Took me six tries to get it to switch to uh, uh, option number two there. Very weird. They're, they're pulling the keyboard in some really strange way. Okay, so this is clearly a very different game. Is that a pig? Is he supposed to be a pig? Huh. Is that an axe down there? Oh, no. Dang, I got Guru meditated. Ah! Uh, I want to go get that axe. So is this like a low, low puzzle game, and I'm supposed to take a really specific path to get down there? Or, like, what's up? Uh, let's see. Does the snail give me room to get to that axe? Yes, he does. Yo, check out the scrolling number in the box. Ah! Wow. This is so much. Uh... Okay, I don't think it's possible to get down through that, uh... I don't think it's possible to get down through that, uh, through that gap there. Uh... Can we do this one? No, I don't think so. What about this? Ah! One of the frustra- Okay, one of the frustrating things about games of this era is often that the motion is pixel precise, which means that if you don't move fully up above an obstruction, you can't get past it. In later titles, in like the Famicom, etc. era, they figured out how to mitigate this so that it wasn't nearly so much of a, a problem by making you by making you pop around the uh hang on a second uh by making you pop around the edge if you're within a certain number of pixels of it well uh dark blood i i don't know what to tell you because this is a 6 megabit stream you're watching right now i'm literally i'm looking at my ethernet card I am sending 6.5 megabits per second. So, uh, this is a 1080p stream. Don't know what to tell you. <laughs> yeah, I cannot figure out how to progress here. I guess maybe... No, how do I do it? I'm gonna try the gap by the cat or wolf head or whatever it is again. This weird thing with the flickering eyes. Ah, uh, all right. Bad game. Don't like it. Uh, piggy punks. Bye. <laughs> no pull tax. Okay. My resume. Okay, this is this is more interesting than anything in the game could have been. Uh, so this is listed as it's from 1990, and it's just listed the publisher's listed as Sinclair User. So I'm guessing that this was a tape that was mailed in to this magazine, um, and the person who mailed it in just decided to uh, use it as a business card. 
Oh, man, that's great. That's real good. So, girls, get riding. <laughs> oh. Wait, Kylie Minogue was a thing in 1990? I thought she was a few years later. Oh. Huh. Really? Yeah, the first Kylie Minogue song I knew about was Can't Get You Out of My Head. That was in 2001. Huh. Okay. Headbangers are welcome. All right, well, that was real good. Uh, scores, demo, go. God, you can tell this is a fairly late title because, like, the developer definitely noticed, uh, had definitely already noticed some uh, uh, complaints uh, that people had about uh, uh, how uh, specy games worked and is trying to compensate for them. 128k owners only. Wow. Oh, that's adorable. Yeah, I mean, so this is from 1990, uh, but it's also, it has the energy of, like, the 2010s titles that you find for the ZX Spectrum and C64 and whatnot, where, like, with the fullness of time and, like, modern dev tools and, and, and that sort of thing, people just started doing stuff that was, like, if you play, if you play a... If you play, like, a ZX Spectrum game that was developed by somebody as a hobby project in, like, 2011, it plays a lot more smoothly than most contemporary games because those people had seen, you know, maybe they'd actually worked on modern games where there's a lot more, um, there's a lot more, uh, the, the accumulation of learned, uh, techniques over the years, uh, all add up, right? So if you've ever made a platform game in the 2010s, you've been on a forum uh, and had somebody go like, oh, it makes it a lot better for the player if, you know, you let them pop around a corner if they're within two pixels of it, right? That sort of thing. Um, and also you just see stuff like, you know, bothering to include instructions, adding little flares here and there other than just the plain menu. This is all stuff you see in very, very late retro software development. Um, and it's really funny to see this in 1990 because at this point in 1990 the ZX Spectrum regardless of where you were I am pretty sure it was starting to be seen as sort of a retro con a retro platform um, I mean the thing was old when it was new um, <laughs> in a lot of ways but uh, this was, you know, it was eight years old at this point uh, the IBM PC was you know blasting out everywhere and so on I really think that uh, probably a lot of people who were picking up development now uh we're probably acutely aware of the complaints that folks had about the the platform but also in 1990 the chances that any person who was making a game had not seen for instance what was going on over on the nes or uh you know even you know what was going on at the pc was just increasingly lower and lower uh <laughs> Slaps. All right. Is this Hungry Hungry Hippos? Uh, yes, yes, it literally is. <laughs> uh, oh, God. Um, um, oh, oh. Found the button. It's up there somewhere. Uh, do I just have to hold it down? Is that what's up? Uh, 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 <laughs> information. How do we play? There we go. Pick one. Q. Got it. Go. There we go. Chomp. 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 I used to actually have a Hungry Hungry Hippos. Wait, I can't do it anymore. Am I full?
Did I did I run out of chomp juice? Like what? Oh no. Ah. Uh, very slowly making its way out of the corner. Wait, is that that was a bigger one? Somebody got like a freaking power pill. All right, well, anyway, I think we've seen what that has to offer, but I'm going to go ahead and put that in the interesting folder solely because of the business card. That's so cool. Here's another automata game. Yeah, baby. I'm pretty sure there was a demo scene for every platform in existence. Uh, Kempson Joystick. Cherry graphic by Jas Austin. Just the ch like literally a cherry. Well, I guess we'll see, won't we? The central chip. This is where all the trouble starts. Oh wow, that's really smooth animation. Edit. Edit. Yeah. Huh. Okay, this is another boulder dash. Those chips? The central chip. Okay, so this is computer themed, I guess? I think this might be another piggy. Interesting, though. You can. Uh. Oops. Oh, you have to be grid aligned in order to. Ah, uh, no! I was just about to make the comment that um, you can partially eat away at the dirt, which is unusual for a, uh, a boulder dash. But if you want to pick up a chip, you have to be grid aligned to do it. Intriguing. So you can sort of, yeah, you can sort of leave these guys iced. Huh. Help. <laughs> well, we've probably seen what this has to offer. Um, I guess this is a better piggy. I've, I've probably told the story on the stream multiple times. Story is probably not the right word, but... Um, I'm going to put this one in the interesting folder and move on. Uh, I probably told the story several times, but... There's a phrase, I don't know where I got it, and I can't find it now, but uh, I've always used this phrase, room game, to refer to a type of game that was very popular on... Uh, very popular in the uh, 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 UK home computer game world, room games being stuff like, um, oh gosh, I actually can't remember, uh, they, hang on a second, I'm just gonna look this up, uh, Jet Set Willy, right, um, Jet Set Willy is a room game, basically, the game takes place in hundreds and hundreds of rooms, each one having a unique, you know, handcrafted layout, um, and most importantly, every room has a name. You'll notice at the bottom of this this level here, it has a hello. Well, you made it this far. Every I could tell already. Every single level in this game is going to have a unique little two line name at the bottom, uh, and it'll be like little in jokes. It'll be the devs going, "Ha ha! You already paid for this game, and you're you know 25 levels in. Are you regretting it now? You know, just sort of that kind of just little quips." Um, Yes, uh, V's uh, uh, is a modern room game, one of the only ones I'm aware of. Every single room has a name, and it's so British. <laughs> it's just intensely British, or, or European, I suppose I should say. I think VVV was a European game, um, and uh, but the, this is all uh, inarguable. The question is just, where did I get the name room game? 
I can't figure it out. I went trying to look it up a few times, and I can't find anybody else saying this. It's just me. <laughs> Unless somebody else can find it, I couldn't find it. Uh, anyway. This is going to be a basic title. Ooh. Rough. Oh, this thing. I actually, uh... I've played this before. I'm stomping ants. That's what's going on. I see. Ah, dang it. I'm gonna move on from this. Uh... Oops. This already looks pretty rough. Oh. Oh, this is gonna be the helicopter cave game, isn't it? Yep. That is exactly what it is. I do not know what my controls are. Yeah, well, we all know what this game is anyway. Uh, <laughs> whoa. Sometimes these just load up some, uh... Load up some, uh... uh load up some basic, and I'm not sure why. Uh, okay, uh, brakes, slower, faster, wheels down. Interesting. Oh, a simulator. I wonder if there's any actual graphics or if it's just, um... Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. That one does not look necessarily very accessible, though. Uh, we have another Automata UK game. I'm in the P's right now, so I keep coming across these because they're all called Pi something. Uh, oh, is this a text adventure? Whoa! That was cool. A key turns the lock. Huh. Yeah, don't know on that one. Um, we're doing Automata UK games today. Um, Kempston, start. Whoa! Hey! What? Do I have to jump? Is that what's up? Oh. Oof. Oh, that's rough. Next title. We have a pinball here. Gibbs. Gibbs, please lay down. I can't see anything. Uh, I have not played Deus Ex Machine. I understand it was like Automata's one serious attempt at making a game. Um, and yeah, I am curious about it. Um, I just jumped to the peas. I picked a random place to drop the needle. Uh, so, uh, hmm. Okay, there we go. Uh, there we go. O and Q. It can be tough to make a good pinball game. Like, it took a while before decent pinball games started coming out. And there's a lot of awful ones. You know, I guess the, um, the sort of double flippers down here, it suddenly occurred to me are an interesting technique for solving the problem of verticality. Since um, television screens are nominally wider than they are tall, not a lot, but some, um, you know, your best bet as far as getting as much board onto the screen as possible uh, would be to make a wider table rather than a taller one. This is a solution I've never seen tried, um, in all the pinball games that I've seen, they all, if they have two screens, you know, some of them, some of them try and compress both uh, uh, the top and bottom of the table, both halves of the uh, table onto the same screen. Um, some of them scroll, uh, which is awkward, hard to follow sometimes. Uh, some of them uh, screen flip or have like 
level transitions. So when you get to the top of the screen or you go through a gate, it takes you to another part of the board. Um, but I've never seen anything that's just like, nope, we just took the top part of the board and we cut it in half and we put it next to the bottom part of the board, which, for my money, seems to be what this is doing. So I had to uh, had to pause because Gibbs is being a real kitty right now. Gibbs, would you like to leave? Because if so, boy, howdy, have I got a bridge to sell you. Get out of here. Scoot. Scoot. Gibbs, come on. I love you, but you need to go. Go. Wet. Ah, he's looking back at me because I betrayed him. Ah. Oh. Okay, I'm back. Yeah, uh, widescreen pinball. What a concept. Honestly, you know, it would be really cool to see this tried now just as a um, a modern game on modern screens, because, you know, screens have been getting wider and wider and wider. Nobody wants to play... I, I, <laughs> I'm suddenly asking myself the question, uh, I'm going to mispronounce this, but has any, is anybody playing pinball in, in Tate mode? <laughs> is anybody rotating the monitor? Uh, and <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, it, you know, it's funny, actually, that the score counter is on the board and it acts as an obstacle. I can land on the I can land on the uh, the scoreboard. Um. <laughs> this double pinball nonsense is a clever solution to the problem of getting a pinball table that is normally very tall onto a screen that is wide instead of tall. Anyway, I want to know if anybody if there are any pinball games that are uh, actually set up so that they can run in uh, nine sixteen. The other thing is, like, I have a, tw I have a, um, what is it, uh, gosh, I'm trying to remember, what is it, 21, 21, 9? What, I, I can't for the life of me remember what the new, uh, <laughs> what the new monitor aspect ratios are. Um, oh, yeah, like, yes, there's arcade machines to do that, I'm sure, but I'm talking about, is anybody enough of a dork about pinball that they're willing to play video pinball at home on a vertical monitor? And uh, it's it's the sort of thing where <clears throat> I, I you know I make fun of uh, you know the lengths that people go to uh, for for things like that you know like uh, the fact that my my girlfriend has. Um, the fact that my, uh, my girlfriend has a pair of monitors on arms on her desk that she can swing aside to expose the 20 inch Sony PBM, uh, in case she wants to play a shmup, um, or whatever. It's extremely ridiculous. I also love her very much and, uh, I respect her for having done this, um, because, hey, it's what she wants, right? And putting unreasonable amounts of effort into stuff like that is respectable. Um... Oops. Sorry, I loaded up the next game, which I think is just a re-release of the same game. Uh, um, but at the same time, I I still think it's very funny um, to, to see the links that people will go to. And one of those is like, if I see a monitor on someone's desk that's in vertical, I'm just going to be like, ah, uh, nice Tade mode, bro. Is it Tade? Does anybody know? Am I pronouncing it right? Tate mode. Oh, this is a Konami game. What? Wait, there is a Tate mode pinball game for Switch. Star Wars pinball for the Switch. Nice.
crap. I'm not even going to start the game. That went so hard. They didn't need to do that. Um, okay, while that was playing, I looked up, I found a Steam post from uh, 2017 that says that there are, uh, on Steam, the following pinball games that are uh, work in Tate mode. Pinball FX3, Pinball FX2, Pinball Arcade, Zakaria Pinball. Um, <clears throat> but then they said that... Uh, Dream Pinball 3D, Soccer Pinball Thrills, Worms Pinball, Hyperspace Pinball, uh, all do not work, and Pro Pinball Ultra detects the screen height, downloads a 2-gig patch, and doesn't work. <laughs> so, uh, wow. Yeah, now I want to play some pinball in Tade mode. I'm loving that. All right, this is not going to be as good as that music was, but that's the whole thing. I, <clears throat> I don't want to be too negative. But I, f I have always felt that people be like, oh, yeah, the C64 it had such great music. And I'm like, really, show me. Show me a game. Show me a game on the C64 with good music. Because on every single one of these platforms, all the home computers, the music is awesome until you press start. And then it's just silence, just dead, dead air. And... um it's always bugged me that, like, people just get, you know, super hype about the music on home computers. And I'm like, it was all on the title screen. It might as well have just been a cassette tape that you had nearby that you could play on while you were playing the game. In fact, a lot of the time, it's annoying <laughs> because you can't play other music because every time you die, you get this burst of irritating... Well, of course. Yeah, no, I know why. I know why it didn't, um, it didn't uh, run during the game. I'm just saying that, uh, all the same, these games don't have any music. This game will not have music when I start it. We know this. Oh, man. I don't know what to expect here. Um... Oh, interesting. Oh, there's like a shot clock. Oh, interesting. Um, huh, if I'm understanding this correctly, you don't actually... Whoa. That was the crowd. Um, if I'm understanding this correctly, you don't actually have any control over where the paddle goes. Oh, man, that's rough. Um, you're just, um, you're just deciding which, uh, uh, which swings to make. Wow, um, yeah, I don't know. Every time I hit it, it just smacks it off the table. Oh, if I press the key, if I press the fire button, it uh, changes which direction I'll hit it. There we go. Not bad. Man, that crowd is absolutely uncalled for. Whoa! Oh no! <laughs> okay, I'm putting this in the interesting games folder, if for no other reason than just <laughs> no, the unexpected events that occur in it are really entertaining. You never know when you're going to hit the ball. Um, the paddle moves on its own, and then the demonic howl from the crowd <laughs> is just sending me. Oh, damn. Yeah, this is this is really well made. Um, don't get me wrong. Um, like as as things go. Um, so I think it's like left for a hard hit, um, and right for a like a light hit. Up for a backhand, I think, and down uh, for serving. Um, pretty, but then yeah, there's stuff like that where I don't exactly know what happened. This is pretty good. I think I've gotten everything I'm gonna get out of it. Let's move on to the next title. 
Pingo, 1984, by Profisoft. Hang on a second, let's... Let's... Can we reload that again? I'm trying to hit pause. Ah, come on. There we go. Yeah, it's doing the fast... The emulator's doing the um, fast tape load thing. Um, and sometimes you'll lose some uh, intro screens when you do that. So yeah, there's... There's a little arcade system that they wish they were programming for. Um, wow, that's adorable. The, like, single pixel, uh, I guess... Well, I, I don't know what they are yet. They're coming for us, though. Oh. 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 Pengi. And then, whatever those are. This is cute. This is cute. I wonder what it'll be. Is a Prophet Soft Joy... That's... Okay. <clears throat> Sorry. For anybody just tuning in, not just to the stream, but to the ZX Spectrum in general, there was no joystick interface built into the ZX Spectrum. So if you wanted to play a game, being that there were no cursor keys on the first like two models, of which they sold billions, uh, and there was no built-in joystick interface, you were a bit of a pickle. Your options were to either uh, just use some random keys on the keyboard, commonly things like QA for up, down, OP for left and right, uh, but that differed for every game. Uh, some games let you redefine keys. Not very many, though. Uh, so if you didn't have the manual, you pretty much had to just press every key on the keyboard to see if you could figure out how to control the game. Or if the game supported a joystick, you could either you could get one of several different third-party or first-party, eventually, add-ons. So you could get the Sinclair, uh, the Sinclair Expansion 1, the Sinclair Expansion 2, the Kempston joystick, which was probably the most popular, um, and so on and so forth. Like, there were, I don't know, four or five different joystick interfaces? Well, apparently, there was also a Profisoft joystick. Who knew? Uh, let me look this up. Let me find a picture of a Profisoft joystick. Uh, ooh, not getting, not getting any results for that, really. Oh, jeez. As I said earlier... I had a hard time sleeping uh, last night. Um, hmm. Okay, two things. One, I can't find any results for Profisoft Joystick. I'm just not really getting anything for that. However, when I search for this, for reasons I don't know, it's pulling up a whole bunch of joysticks from ASCII, uh, which is a Japanese game dev. And I'm trying to figure out is there a... Profisoft was supposedly German. Yeah. Huh. I don't know. Well, I definitely don't have one. All right. What's up? Um, game over. Oh, okay. Well, you can edit as easily as it started. Oh, okay. Uh, so... Okay. Having some cursor assignment issues here. Oh, that's that is so weird. Yeah, I just can't get him to like consistently move. All right, well, this one does not look so hot. Uh, the most interesting thing about it was the bizarre joystick that it. Yeah, yeah. Apparently, if you don't have a profit soft, just don't even show up, bro. Uh, so yeah. <laughs> Q -A -O Q -A -P, B for beta. All right. I don't speak this language. I don't know what these letters mean. I don't think I'm going to want to play this very much. I, I am liking this big print routine. Oh, double pong? Hello? I win. Okay. That's some sort of pong knockoff. Moving on. El Pintor, 1983, Investronica. Pulsa and a tecla para continuar. Uh, wouldn't that be press, press a key to continue? Oh, window's not highlighted. There we go. Where? Where? Hmm. Okay, gonna move on from that one. Pioneer, 1984, Atlantis. Okay. 
We got a chop lifter here. Which crashes when I try to start it. I have an alternative dump here. Let me try that. That also didn't work. Uh, this is... Let me switch this to a 16k spectrum. Dink. That one crashes even faster. Uh, let's try 128k. I mean, let's just give it the benefit of the Dort here. Though I don't think... Nope. That's going to be no dice. Yeah, that one's just broken. Interesting. Uh, n n n next, uh, Pipe Mania 1990. Well, well, <laughs> that's going to be a, yeah, that's Pipe Dreams. I never liked Pipe Dream, and I'm not going to play it. Uh, interesting. But be careful with level two. I'm very good. Okay, I actually, uh, for some reason, I'm hearing this in the. What's the guy from? What's the guy from Doug? Who's just like, it's very expensive, Douglas. That's that's what I'm reading that text in. Uh, <clears throat> all right. Well, anyway. Please wait for prompt. Okay. See, I, I prefer, uh, this is incredibly uh, elitist, but, um, like, what can I say? I prefer to play games nobody has heard of. Um, you know, it's just, uh, it's a thing with me that, like, there's stuff that gets lots of coverage. I'd like to play stuff that gets no coverage. Um, This is interesting. So, is this this is sort of a oops, done goofed. Wait, I won? How did I win? All right, that game's weird. Next title. Well, that doesn't look like it's worth. Oh. I don't know if this game is going to actually work, but this is dope. Okay, there we go. Whoa! Emanation! Kempston. Screen A. Wow. Oh, okay, it's this game. This game got ported to everything in the absolute universe. It's just another pipe dream, and I don't even like it. Oh, okay. Um, pi R squared. Mind games. Wow. Oh, whoops. I think I'm starting to remember what this is. Do it. Won't, won't go. 
that, it's really frustrating. Sometimes you just can't, you just can't get past the first page, or the first uh, screen. Um, let's see, it did, it seemed to acknowledge the joystick there, so I guess, yeah, okay, uh, joystick's working now, for whatever reason. Oh no. Oh, okay, this is cool. So to collect this item, do I just have to go around? Yep. Bonk. So I've got health. Oh, that's right. I can change the direction of rotation. Whoops. Uh, this is kind of frenetic, but uh, I can see how you could, you know, get used to it. Okay, and that's going to be how we get to the next level, right? Oh, well, I guess we probably have to go back to the uh, exit. Oops. Come on. How do we do it? Did we finish everything? Sure seems like it. Oh, wait. Did I go down here? Yeah, I did. Hmm. This is pretty well made. I'd probably have to read the uh, instruction manual to understand how to exit. Oh, there we go. That's what it is. Dang it. Alright. Hey, um, I need to step away for just a couple minutes. Um, I will be back. I will leave you with some music. Hello. I am back. Oops. I don't know if you're getting this, but Gibbs is back in here and he is shouting just constantly. Um, anyway. Hmm. Yeah, I wonder if I do have to get him in order. I doubt it, honestly, but let's see. Oh, well, Gibbs just laid on my keyboard and opened the settings dialog. He's a good cat. Love this cat.
keep finding myself wondering uh, if the uh, if the directions of rotation of these wheels are necessarily, you know, no, that's right. They they are definitely not driving one another because those two are uh, turning in the same direction. All right, so having done that, we should now be able to exit, right? Yep, there we go. Hmm, this level looks identical to the previous one. Wait, is this the same level? It says L01. Well, maybe that's it. Maybe I didn't get them in the right order. Oops. Shit. Ah, damn it. I'm not exactly sure what happened there. My character just, like, I couldn't control him. What? What is going on here? I think that piece, I think that food I ate down there slowed me down. Ah, dang it. Come on. Yeah, I mean, I could just go read the manual for it, but I'm going to try the, the suggestion of uh, capturing these things in, in the in the order of the name. Um, I think I know how to not mess that up this time. Yeah, so I picked up that like ice cream and it slowed me way down for a few seconds and that's why I got, that's why I got hit the last few times I tried. Because I was very quickly picking that up and then picking up the next, uh, or then moving on to the next ring. So, dang it. There we go. Okay. Got the two, I've got the pie. And now the R. And now Level two. There we go. Ah, okay. We get a new order of things to collect. Okay, so it's important that we not accidentally cross, uh, go all the way around that that last one. Oh wow, this gets harder. A, this gets a lot harder really fast. Oh. Okay, so we just have to collect the L. Then go back and get the N, then come back and get the X. Oh, no, 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 no. No. Again, this is a game that would be a lot easier if the frame rate was just a little bit higher. Because as it stands, you're really always making decisions about, you know, a player position that you haven't actually been in for, you know, a 30th or a, or a, or a 15th of a second or something. All right, I'm going to go ahead and put that one aside. That was very much, like, there was a category of, a big category of, like, weird geometry puzzle games um, that were uh, that were kind of big in the 90s. Um, that was from 87, so I guess that was the sort of the beginning of that process. This one. Uh, Gibbs, don't cause trouble. 
I do not know what this is asking me. Gibbs is here, and he wants pets and rubs and scratches. And I'm trying to do a, a, a popular video game stream here because that's what we do on the internet now when we're popular streamers. Uh, uh, that just means I do not understand. This, is this just a, is this just a text adventure? Whatever, I'm going to move on. Uh, bu -bu 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 Out of memory. Oh, that's exciting. I guess probably because I guess it wants a 128k then. Oh yeah, here we go. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry, let's go over this stuff for a moment. <laughs> the unreleased four adventures of the almighty Scott Adams. Hopefully not that Scott Adams. But anyway, it's a US gold game, and I guess this is the crack tro. And the crack the cracking group. It's just, sorry, you can't use a joystick in these four adventures. I painted this one to remind you that this is an adventure. <laughs> oh, Lord. Oh, man, is this going to load? Or is this going to get corrupted? I'm in a flat in London. Okay, this is just a text adventure. Oh, man. This is called Pirate Dogfight. Uh, this is a 1982 title, so this is like a really early, probably like a type-in basic game or something. Um, Pyromania, an automatic game. Whoa, that background gradient is really dope. Okay, so I've got some water. Am I putting out fire? Oh, I'm putting out fires. Okay. Well, not if I die. All right, let's try this again. Okay, how much water do I have? Apparently quite a bit. I just rescued someone? Through no fault of my own. Okay. Put that out. Ah. Oh no. Yeah, so again, uh, it's very hard to control. And I don't know if it's being pulled correctly by the emulator or if the real thing was like this. I'm starting to think that I would like very much. Um, oh, interesting. Fire extinguishers. I would like very much to basically take a bunch of these that play really poorly on emulator um, and play them on the real thing and just see how they compare. I'm really curious how much of this is the emulator's fault. Oh, there we go. Really good background. I love that background. So, I'm guessing I can't open this door? Oh no, I can. Oh. I don't necessarily know if there's a difference between the levels. Hmm. Also, sometimes I see a fire that's not red, and I wonder if that has any meaning. All right, um, well, that's interesting, and I'm going to put it in the interesting games folder. Next title, Perks. Hmm. This is probably a text adventure. Hopefully it's not, like, just horny? Well, yeah, Ben, I would have to use the real specy, and that's definitely a big downside, don't get me wrong. Uh, at the same time, I do own one. It is Gathering Dust. Uh, I might as well. Had to switch this to the 48k to get it to load. That is a mouse cursor. What? This is from 1988. What is going on? Oh man, seeing that mouse cursor move in the uh, uh, through the uh, color map is 
Oh, that's really something. That's surprisingly legible. Oh no, it crashed. I'm gonna try the second one. Perks 2. Whoa! Ah, uh, that doesn't look like it's gonna load. Well, maybe it will. Uh, maybe I should roll over to my storage unit and pick up my specy. I've got too much stuff in this room. I gotta finish some videos before I do that. Uh, I'm really behind on getting my next video out. I know nobody cares, per se, but I care. It's inconvenient to put it in uh, really mild terms. Okay, can't get either one of those to run, but they're definitely cool. All right. So zero, pi pi so zero, joystick mode. Look at that, look at the dude at the bottom in the middle. Actually, all the mugs on this, on this screen are very good. <clears throat> oh, I played this before. It was exceptionally difficult. Propardo. All right, I'm gonna move on from that. Uh, Pitfall 2, I think we played this before. I think I landed in a spot where I've, uh, oh. Wow. Yeah? Yeah? Sorry about the beeps. Is this gonna let me continue, or, like, yeah, it's, it's Morse, and, like, that's almost good, but, like, can I continue, though? Whoa. Let me look this game up. Because, like, there was a Pitfall 2... Lost Caverns, but... Is that what this is supposed to be? Yeah, apparently. Uh, well, supposedly this is from 1984. <laughs> Oh my god. Look at how it's look at how it's demonstrating the controls. It sucks that they had to do this. At the same time, what a remarkable way to do it. It's also huh, that's an interesting key layout. A gas suit. Hang up gas suit. Ah, there's so many controls. There is no way this is this is called Pitfall 2 Lost Caverns. There is no way this is connected to the uh, uh, to the game of that title. I do not know what is going on. Hard. Hang on, I gotta look this up. Is this the game I think it is? I'm trying to see the intro. It says it is, but this is not Pitfall 2 The Lost Caverns. It just isn't.
wait, this is a different game. What did I have open? Wait, what the hell? This is the one I drug over there. I drug over Pitfall 2. This is Pitfall 2. What did I have? Not this. Was it this one? No. What the hell was just loaded just now? What? This one, Pitman 7. This was from 1983. This was on a separate, this was nowhere close to the file I tried to drag over. What the hell just happened? That was bizarre. Hey, it's Pitfall 2. God, this music. Well, I guess I'll take Pitman 7 and put it in the uh, uh, interesting games folder, because it is interesting. Okay, and now here's Pitfall 3. Oh, no, this is from 2013. Never mind. Uh, since I opened it, I am going to check it out. Oh, my God, this is definitely a modern game. Wow. Man. It's 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 fascinating because this is this would as far as I know run on exactly the same hardware as all the other games I've been playing. It's just that nobody at the time you know knew that they could make a game that worked that played like this. This is instantly smoother than any of the other games I've played on the the Spectrum. Um and it's just it's just the benefit of knowledge. It's just the fact that they they knew what was coming next instead of, you know, being limited to only the knowledge that was available at the time. It's, it's, it's very weird because I don't know whether to say that it's a better game or, you know, sort of lament the fact that, yes, it may be objectively better, you know, play easier, etc., but there was so much innovation going on because nobody knew what was quote-unquote correct, you know? Um... Yeah, okay. <sighs> that that is that is interesting, but uh it it definitely isn't the ZX Spectrum game. And it's n not clear Whoa. My god, that ate up so much memory. That's that's like FMV. This must have been uh this this must be using some hella compression. This is, uh, supposedly this is from 1991. Okay, my Amiga music has, has lined up with, uh, the, the game, finally. Wow, this looks better than I expected, though. Oh, there we go. I was having a hard time finding the fire key.
There we go. Yeah, this this isn't like in any sort of objective sense good, uh, but it is very impressive. And like, so, you know, you can make out what's on screen, which is saying something. The music, to be absolutely clear, is coming from a YouTube video. Just want to make sure everybody knows that. Yeah, this is interesting, and I'm going to put it in the Interesting Games folder. All right, Pitman 7 we already did, uh, much to my confusion. Uh, well, that's irritating. Oh, that's really irritating. QA, OP, okay. And this is a snake. I don't need a snake. Uh, Pixarama. Load and run. copyright symbol who can move with pixel precision. I'm not sure why, though. <laughs> what the hell? Okay, I don't know what that was supposed to be. I think that might have been a demo. Right? Pixie the micro dot. Okay, QW space. Seems easy enough. I had this feeling that I was going to be playing this as a uh, uh, as a single pixel. Yeah, I noticed the comments were really delayed earlier. Oh wow. Okay. All right. So, sorry. Uh, so everyone knows. So I'm playing that single pixel there. If I touch anything, I blow up. I can press space to thrust and then Q and W to move left and right. Those are the only controls. And it's very floaty. It's like a lunar lander. So, for instance, I think... Oops. Yeah, so like to start here, I think I'm going to have to accelerate and get myself on a vector to uh, get through that hole. So I guess what I could do... Oh, this game's going to be so hard. Uh, not quite. Man, I'm just asking myself, what's the next screen going to look like? If this is the debut... Yeah, this is really hard. Like, I want to be the guy difficulty level here. Can I just get through it like that? Like, if I just apply some side thrust at the beginning here, can I just slam through it? Maybe I can. By the way, there's a sequel to this, so I'm interested in that. Also, this was put out by Your Sinclair, so I suspect this was like a fan, fan, fan program. Oh, boy. So, can I go left? Yes, I can. Oh. Yeah, I Want to Be the Guy is perhaps one of the most popular modern room games, although v v v v v v definitely outstrips it. It is funny, though, to think of it in those terms. Interesting. Okay, so the yellow thing over there is probably a switch, is my guess. And there's probably a similar one for the red gate here. Wow, this is already fascinating. This has strong indie title energy, and I think it may have been. My initial guesses about where this game were, was was going are uh, uh, were completely incorrect. Oh, there's another one of those items down there. Ah, dang it! Wow, this is this is one of those things you get in a game uh, where you just um, 
you, 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 you can go into this area just so you can see what you're going to get destroyed by later. This happened in, like, um, Legacy of the Wizard, the uh, uh, Dragon Slayer title. Uh, was was real bad about it. God, that game was cool. I've always wanted to see a spiritual successor to that. Oh, oh, nope, blew up. Dang it! This game is so hard. <laughs> you know, this is another one of those titles for which I think if I bump up the CPU speed by double or half again, I should say, 150%, I'm probably gonna find it a lot easier to play. Yeah, see, there we go. Look at this. And it's it's also interesting in the sense that it's a... It is an... Ah, dang it. This is going to be so hard. Um, oh, no. Are, ben, are you saying are you saying this was a basic type-in? I mean, that's kind of what I suspected. I mean, I knew... It looked like it was a reader submission to a magazine, but man... This has strong Famicom energy. This is from 87, so I guess this could be... Like, the design of these tiles feels like... Feels like it came out of a, a, a Japanese game. Wow. Yeah, so... I have some comments about that. Uh, two things. One, you've got very limited screen real estate, right? So the larger your player character is, the larger your player sprite, um, you know, you're going to have less motion on the screen, right? If you make it bigger, uh, then you're either going to have to make everything else smaller or you're going to have just, you know, much worse uh, room to maneuver. Um, so this allows you to get more intricacy onto one screen. The other thing, though, is that uh, collision detection used up gobs and gobs of CPU time because... <clears throat> Unless you had tricks available or hardware assistance, which the ZX Spectrum did not have, um, the only way for you to find out whether your player character is colliding with something is to ch pick every single one of its pixels uh, or pick the corners of its bounding box and then check them against every single other object on the screen, which very rapidly adds up to hundreds or thousands of calculations per frame. This is actually why a lot of NES games uh, had such terrible slowdown. If you're playing like Mega Man, the reason it gets the frame rate just goes to hell when you have like three or four things on the screen is because it's doing collision detection on all of those things. And that ends up being tons and tons of uh, uh, checks per, per frame. If you have just a single dot, then you can do one collision check, right? So it's literally in... The, the most the most basic collision detection you can do is just to take the four corners of your sprite or just take the bottom two corners of your sprite in some games, um, if that makes sense, and just check those. But compared to a box, this actually quarters the amount of effort you have to do with collision detection. Uh, so that's definitely a time saver. So that's pretty cool. Um, there's a second one here. And we're going to check that out too. Whoa! Damn, they came up in the world. Wow. Okay. <laughs> by the way, all these games were cracked by uh, Europeans, unsurprisingly. Mostly, I think, um, uh, you know, Eastern European. Wow. Hang on.
That was so good. Whoa. Things have already changed quite a bit. Okay, so space pauses now for some reason. Okay, there we go. Okay, O, O and P go left and right. Oh, I see. So I'm being drawn to the left. Don't know why that is. Okay, here we go. So it's Q A O P. All right. Uh, there's no longer like the 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 thrust to go up mechanic. All the graphics in this have so much character. Like, compared to the previous game, which was obviously, like, a tech demo, um, this one appears to have had the attention of, like, an artist and designer. What happened between these two games? And the score is going up, and I wonder if this is actually a score game or if there's a purpose to it. Whoa, there's a, like, gravitic repulsion going on from the, uh, the, the yellow and blue thing there. Yeah, it's definitely forcing me away. Unless it's, or is it that, is it that magnet? Yeah, yeah, it's just the magnet, okay. Now, okay, I can't open this door yet. This is cool. This is very cool. <laughs> hey, Swirl. Glad to glad to hear it. Yeah, I uh, I wasn't sure about these when I started doing them, but I'm having a good time with them. Oh, I see. So there's a magnet in each one of these rooms. I hadn't noticed that. Duh. Okay. That makes more sense. Okay, and there's a magnet in there as well. All right, that's what's going on. Man, it's the Tecmon Muppet. Is this really? Oh, this is from five years later. You're right. I misread the date. I thought this was like pretty, I thought this was, you know, similarly um, contemporary with the uh, the first one. All right. So yeah, like years goes by, the guy probably got a job as a game dev and then, you know, gets, just gets it in his head like, hey man, what if I made a sequel to Pixis? Or uh, Pixie the Microdot. Yeah. Also, this has been cracked. Um, and the crackers also apparently turned on like a 99 life, uh, or uh, just uh, implicitly left on a 99 life cheat. So that's actually making it a lot easier to explore. It's interesting, you know, they, they put the um, they put the magnets carefully in places that are going to lead to you getting just hosed, you know, uh, pulling you into enemies, that sort of thing. Hey, check it out, I'm the DVD screensaver. Man, man, that raises a question. I'm now thinking to myself, uh, sorry, I got distracted by gameplay and forgot what I was going to say. Never mind. There's almost like a Giger-esque sort of energy going on here. I wonder if these constructs in the middle do anything. They feel like they should. Ah, oh, come on. Oh, come on, man. Wah. 
Where? There we go. Well, okay. I think I've I think I've done every possible path. Um, now I got to figure out I think how to clear these obstacles. Oh wait. What? Am, am I soft locked? I think I'm soft locked. I don't think I was supposed to do that. <laughs> oh boy. Okay. Yeah, that was that's what I was gonna say. Okay, so. The thing that's interesting about Pixie the Microdot and, the, you know, that connects it to, um, yeah, I'm, I'm finding speedrun strats here. Uh, the thing that's interesting about Pixie the Microdot, the first one that is, is, uh, you know, I've commented many times before about how the ZX Spectrum was, uh, oh, jeez, sorry, oh, dang it. Um, the ZX Spectrum and other 8-bit British um, computer games um, were hard as hell, just just incredibly hard. But it feels like it's because they didn't know what else to do. Nobody had invented Super Mario Brothers yet. The idea that you could kill enemies by jumping on them, for instance, as a default game mechanic, that didn't exist yet. Well, I mean, by 1985 it did, but even then, you know, it took time for that to spread out, right? So there were there was at least a three-year period during which nobody in the UK had seen Super Mario Brothers, uh, and of course, Super Mario Brothers, you know, redefined 2D, um, particularly platform game mechanics, and also introduced people to a higher standard of quality from video games. It just really took things from, uh, really took things from, you know, garage, you know, basement experimental software uh, that even the Famicom you know, was rife with into an era when video games were expected to have a certain level of quality and, like, internal consistency. In in games prior to, like, the Super Mario Brothers era, not all of them, but, you know, many of them, it was acceptable for a character in a game to move in a way you didn't expect, right? Um, and Super Mario Brothers came along and was like, no, the collision is flawless, you will never get hit by something uh, unless it looked like you were going to get hit by it. The physics are completely internally consistent. If you jump after, you know, a few times, you will understand how jumping works for the rest of the game and how it interacts with everything. And if you haven't done something before, you'll be able to predict how it's going to happen before you do it. And that's why that game took off the way that it did. And it only got more and more uh, consistent as time went on. They made more and more games. They had more and more consistent physics. Like, they had more physics, and those physics were very predictable, um, to the point that you could make assumptions about how things were going to work before you, you know, mechanically you'd never tried before. And the ZX Spectrum predates all of that. <laughs> like, the games on there, you know, many of them were made before that game even came out. Um, and... Uh, uh, even after that game came out, not everybody had it. And then, of course, not everybody knew how to make games work like that. And then, of course, there was no scrolling, which made things like a lot of the stuff, a lot of the mechanics that worked on the Famicom and NES didn't work on these systems because you couldn't smoothly scroll the, the game field. So there were a lot of games on here where the developers presumably just didn't know how to make a fun game. Um... Not you know not to dunk on them too hard. I mean I've heard I've met people who think the dizzy games are fantastic. I find them insufferable. And in general, a lot of the games on these platforms, even though they take a similar form to to newer games, the way I put it is that at some point game developers started trying to make the player win. This is a thing uh, I say whenever I'm dunking on uh, gamers, uh, which I do extensively. Uh, and I mean capital G gamers, I mean the bastards, I mean the people who ruin everything for everybody, who are insufferable. Uh, but <clears throat> uh, gamers have this, uh, a lot of gamers have this ridiculous notion that they are good at a game if they can complete it. No. Games for the last 20 years have been designed so that the average person will be able to finish them. It takes a little bit of patience sometimes, but they're intended to be completed. On top of that, as time has gone on, particularly over the last 15, 10, 15 years, game developers have gotten more and more and more savvy about making players feel smart for doing things the game quietly helped them do. Um, games make sure that you get that headshot that you actually aren't good enough to get. They make sure that you make that landing that you actually missed. 
because that way you feel good. You feel cool. You feel capable. It's an illusion. It's entertainment. It's meant to make you feel cool and strong and powerful and fast when you actually aren't really all that strong and powerful and fast. So there are people who are very good at games, but they aren't nearly as good as they think they are. Even the people who are doing the, you know, uh, 360 no scopes in modern FPSs, they have no idea how much is going on behind the scenes. This is less true in multiplayer, which is why multiplayer is such a focus for um, meatheads, for asshole jocks who make everyone miserable. Um, <clears throat> but, but particularly in single player games, uh, yeah, you, you aren't very good. <laughs> you aren't as good as you think you are. The game is designed to make you not only win, but to win and feel super cool in doing it. Old games weren't like that. That is the fundamental difference. That in 1983, when some guy in Britain sat down and started writing a game, he simply was not having the thought, how am I going to make the player win this game? He cre you know, They sat down, they created a bunch of challenges, they made sure that they could be completed, but the idea of balance between challenge and um, uh, you know, rewarding the player, it's just not there. Uh, it's obvious in everything that the question of what if this frustrates the player simply did not come up. And I don't think that is any sort of criticism of the developers. I think that no one had invented fun games yet, if you will. No one, no one had invented games that were, and I don't, you could be a challenge, you know, without being infuriating. And they were just making challenges and not, you know, not trying, why the hell is my monitor on over here? That's weird. Um, they were making challenges and not making absolutely certain that the average person would be able to complete them. I mean, hell, how many ZX Spectrum games do you think were beta tested at all? Other than the ones put out by by really major publishers. Like, maybe if, like, Mindscape or Activision put out a game, that might have gotten beta tested. I would guess that most of these were played by the person who wrote it, maybe a friend or two, maybe somebody at the publisher. And the only thing they cared about mostly was, does it crash? Does it run? Does it work? Um, so a lot of games came out buggy, but more importantly, a lot of games just came out intensely difficult. Now, having said all that, what is fascinating about Pixie the Microdot from 1987 is that it is one of the first, one of the earliest games I'm aware of that looks like it is meant to be infuriating. It's, it's not that, it's not that it doesn't, didn't know how to be easier. It is that it is meant to make you tear your hair out in frustration. That is a genre of game that started becoming a little more popular in later decades, like way up in the, the indie explosion, like the late 2000s, when we got stuff like I Want to Be the Guy. The purpose of that game is to make you, uh, to use the terminology of the people who wrote it, butt hurt. There is no better term for the emotion that that game is meant to make you experience. You are supposed to, it's supposed to make you into a little sobbing baby who can't accept that they're not as good as they want to be. And um, you don't see that in games of this era. You don't see it on, there's not a single game on the NES, I would say, that plays like that, because that's just not what they were optimizing for. You, you really need to have an indie game for it to work like that, right? That's why stuff like uh, Tuhu, um, you know, a game that, if you were to put like a Tuhu game on an arcade machine, put it in an arcade with nobody knowing what it was, um, you know, no one would play it. It, it. There'd be no quarters in it. A couple, and then people be walking away pissed off. The reason that Two Who got big is because you could get it, I think, for free. Um, and that meant that tons of people could get it, find out whether it was something they were interested in, and more importantly, they knew ahead of time what they were getting into and why they were getting into it. And so, you know, you, 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 you're not just some rando, you know, walking up and going like, how the hell was I supposed to survive that? There was like, 30,000 bullets on the screen. What? Um, but that's that's like level six, right? And then level 10 <laughs> is stuff like, I want to be the guy. That's just It's just supposed to eviscerate you. It's just supposed to destroy you. Um, okay, yeah. So you could get you could get to who fairly easily. And of course, it was word of mouth um, because, of course, I think it started out as a PC-98 game and Japanese gamers, you know, are a little more they seem like they have a little more patience 
um, in a lot of ways for particularly weird stuff. Um, and I think it sort of started with, you know, people over there um, buying those games and, you know, getting extremely good at them and showing off. And then Americans probably started to see, you know, YouTube videos of that and so on and so forth. But the point is that it, almost everyone that it gets to knows about it ahead of time. Um, they know why it exists and that it is meant to be very difficult uh, and, you know, very rewarding for extremely patient people. So, yeah, seeing that in 87, just wild. And honestly, a lot of what I've been doing is I've been playing through this, this uh, Spectrum game collection is trying to find games that feel like they're ahead of their time. Uh, you know, some of the, the classics people bring up, the, you know, Jet Set Willy, for instance, <sighs> awful. You know, I, I, I'll just straight up tell you, I don't like them. Um, I can see how they may have been fun back in the day. Uh, one important thing about games like that, like Jet Set Willy, which is a room game, uh, is that, one, there's a palpable sense of progress, right? Each of the rooms in a room game is its own puzzle, which you can solve and then be done with. And then the next time you go there, you know how to solve it. Um, so you can get further, and consequently, these games were enormous, right? And I think that's a lot of why the games that, you know, you say ZX Spectrum, someone goes, oh, blah, 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 and blah, right? The reason they drop, name drop those four or five games, uh, the re you know, the reason those particular games became well-known is because those are the probably the ones that felt like they had the most bang for your buck, because there was like 10,000 games for the ZX Spectrum, many of which were very simple, simplistic. Spending eight bucks or twelve bucks or whatever on a tape only to get an hour of gameplay out of it before you're dead bored, you know, hurt just as much as spending sixty bucks on one now. And really, the you know, probably this is a funny thing to think about, um, but probably the worst era of dollar for value uh, video games in history was probably like the mid NES era, because you could spend like fifty dollars on a game that was just nothing, <laughs> right? Prior to that, you spent way less on games. After that, games got way more sophisticated. So even if they were bad, they were at least long, you know? Um, Quake, Quake 2 is not a good game, in my opinion. But it will chew up, like, a you know, a day or two of your time if you're good at it. And more if you're not so much. Um, it felt like it was worth 60 bucks, you know? And, and there was, of course, a lot more in it, right? Lots of 3D graphics, lots of music, um you know, there is a story, I guess, etc. So, uh, in, in 1983 or, or, or whatever, Jet Set Willy was the best you were going to get because if, if you just wanted something that was going to provide, if you didn't have very high standards, you know, no offense intended, just you hadn't seen the NES yet. Arcade games at this time were not very in-depth and didn't have lengthy... I mean, consider Jet Set Willy compared to an arcade game where... If you have a progress system at all, it's only in terms of like either scores going up or if it's like a, a, a oh man, in the early 80s, they didn't even, they didn't even really have, you know, 16-bit uh, era graphics in, in many games yet. So you didn't have stuff like shmups where you progressed from one region to another, that sort of thing. There was, there would have been so little sensation of progression in an arcade game. The fact you could sit down with Jet Set Willy and spend many, many, many hours at home, you know, not pumping in quarters and feeling like you're making continuous progress, getting to new places, you're really getting your bang for the buck, right? Um, but the trouble is just that that, I think, is its selling point, not that it is fun. Let's play Jet Set Willy. For anybody who does not know what that's like. Because it's not a good game, if you ask me. Um, yeah, it's from 1984. Wow, really? It's just made by Software Projects? Can that be true? Uh, is this the one I intended? I think it is. No training. Uh, no, I guess. Oh, this may not have been cracked yet. Uh, hang on a second. Let me get one that's cracked. Dink. Oh, hell yeah. Oh, come on. Oh, there we go. Oh, my God.
Right. I didn't actually know it was the sequel to Manic Miner. That makes sense. Give me a sec, because I cannot tolerate this music. Okay. Well, okay, let's do Manic Miner. Let's just pick something that's, uh... Uh, let's see. Here we go. Okay, 1983 from Bug Bite. Miner Willy. Alright, so... Give me a sec to figure out the controls. Q-O-P. There we go. Alright, so I'm dead. Right, um... Wow, this music is going a little harder than I expected. And I'm dead. Man, this, like, Matrix soundtrack nonsense that's going on in this Amiga compilation is not what I anticipated. Uh. Oh, wait, this plant down here didn't kill me. Why did that one kill me? Oh, yeah, it did. Damn it. Sorry, not smart, not a smart man. This is a well-made game, I have to say. Like, that's something I can't really deny. Oh, I can't actually outrun him. How many lives do I have left? Can't be that many. Once you're on this conveyor belt, you can't, like, change direction or anything. Okay, so... There we go. The only thing you can do is jump. Oh, de <sighs> Okay, so you see what I mean, right? They're like, hey, I gotta... Ah, oh, damn it. Hit the stalactite. Um... Oh, yeah, actually, it wouldn't surprise me if I accidentally hit the trainer at the beginning to get infinite lives. That's probably the case. Damn it! Wow, I, I don't know... I don't know what... What alt-rock song is being sampled in this Amiga track. Damn it. It's it's actually really hard to hit the uh, correct uh, trajectory when jumping over this, like, dragon guy here. Um, you have to jump when he's much further away than you think. You have to jump when he's, like, there. Uh, yeah, see, I actually went late. So, yeah, I got all the way up here earlier, and then, whoops, I got murked by the stalactite. Like, come on, assholes. And likewise, I'm going to have to catch that other key either on the upswing or the downswing. I haven't decided. Let's try up. Okay, got it. Ah, crap. And then, of course, you know, modern platform game reflexes. But still, I try to jump back to safety because I see the ground crumbling under me. And, whoops, the other ground crumbles. <laughs> Go to hell. It's, you know... But it still doesn't have that. It still doesn't have that like modern indie game, like <laughs> you know, you're 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 going to die as hell sort of energy to it, right? It just feels like this was. Damn it! It just feels like this is you know the best they could think of. You know, this actually, um, this one I think, is not the game I was necessarily thinking of. I think Jet Set Willy is a better example of what I was trying to describe, because this one, I suspect, we'll find out when we move forward here, but I think this one's fairly linear. Ah. Uh. Damn it! Ah, even with infinite lives, like, this, you know, can you imagine getting to this point and still, I actually, I get this a lot on uh, streams from people, and I also have gotten it from my girlfriend uh, several times, they'll like, I'll be playing a, a game like this, and somebody will just go, I would have quit 15 minutes ago. <laughs> and I'm like, well, that's, that's one of my special qualities, um, you know, one of... <laughs> Why, why watch why watch my streams? Why give me Patreon money? Well, um, you know, because ideally, I think, uh, this is what I'm trying to do, I am willing to put a little more 
time and energy into things that are objectively miserable. <laughs> like, somebody has to, right? All right. I got this the first time. I'm not really sure. You know what? I'm supposed to catch this on the downswing, and I messed it up. That's that's the secret. I'm supposed to get it on the downswing. Ugh, bad. Look how long it's taken me to get through just level one. And the worst part is just, like, it's not going to get easier, right? Like, level two is going to be just as hard. I'm, it's not None of my skills will transfer, you know? Um... It's just a completely different kind of difficulty than what exists in an NES title. Yeah, I'm not, if you're when, by the second to the last key, if you're referring to the one that's uh, behind the plant there, oh, I don't know. Probably, yeah, I think you're right. This sucks, man. See. Look at how much fun I'm not having with this versus pretty much every other game that I've greenlit on this stream, right? Like, even the bad ones, I at least had some respect for. But this one is just... Yeah, it's just screaming misery. It is at least well made, you know? Damn it. Nah, go to hell. Um... Yeah, yeah, this tape belongs in the trash. So, I can't even get past the first level here to show you, but the thing is, I'm pretty sure that the second screen here is going to have more, you know, more stuff, but still just be a, uh, still just be a, uh, um, a linear level. You know, I just get through it and, and then I'm done, right? Uh, let's go ahead and start Jet Set Willy. All right, and so... The trouble with Jet Set Willy is that in addition to everything killing you, there are a thousand different ways you can go. So we're now in the top landing. This is the bathroom. This is the top landing. And of course, you get in here and instantly there's something coming right at you, right? Um, if we go up here, um, same basic mechanisms, except it's now like an open world game. And there's multiple ways to do everything. And so... You know, in addition to the game being infuriating to play, you now are responsible for figuring out what to even do. And and it just goes on and on and on and on and on. The There's just countless rooms. I don't know how many rooms there are. I think she kills you. I think she kills you. Yes. Um, I don't know how many rooms there are, but there's a lot. Give me a sec. Is this a death pit, or does it go down? I thought, okay, it does. It goes down. Is there a time limit? Oh, it does have a time, so I'll bet there is a time limit. Oh, is there a room-based time limit? Or is that the pause screen? Did it just... But yeah, uh, right, yes, very British, right? Oh my god. Like, the the Monty Python foot is here. You know, it's it's just... Gobstoppingly... Oh, okay. I was, I was sitting here going, like, I'm a pig? And, like, the wife is here over and over? This is the nightmare room. Oh, boy... I, I, I say this with the most possible respect uh, for those who uh, might be afflicted by it, but oof, heterosexuality, oh, rough. You can you can do it without screwing it up, but boy, howdy, everyone seems to be in a competition to see if they can do it as poorly as possible. Anyway, um, even having just gotten to, to this part... Um, even just having gotten, you know, uh, through a few rooms here, I could have taken a different path, as far as I know, and been in a totally different place. And, you know, you can leave a room without having completed everything in it. 
right? So, uh, for instance, um, you know, there's an item down there. There's like a ring or something down there, and I don't know how to get it. I don't know if I can go get it right now. Uh, so, basically, you can you can move through this massive expanse of, um, you know, sort of anonymous rooms that are. Uh, supposed to have they notionally have identity and meaning but practically do they um etc uh it, it's just sort of you know back rooms just kind of um abstract oh my god it's incredibly difficult it's not meant to be won you are not supposed to finish this game you know it, it is not pro player. And that's just such a change. It's just such a change from uh, uh, the way that things are done now, but really even just the way they were done. People talk about Nintendo hard, right? And Nintendo hard is an interesting concept because it's not like the ZX Spectrum. Uh, there was a... There, there was actually... I, I respect... Crontendo a lot. Crontendo is the reason that I do most of what I do. Like, I was always into all the things that I'm into, basically, but that was the thing that made me go, you know what, maybe people would actually be interested in seeing sort of, you know, kind of contemplative dives into things like, for instance, people talk about Nintendo games, they go, oh yeah, Mega Man, oh yeah, Super Mario Brothers. I want to see the Nintendo games, because there were thousands of them, that no one has heard of. And he does that. Dr. Sparkle does that. I love it so much. It's it's very, very cool what he does. Um, but I remember there's one in a... I think it was a recent Crontendo episode. Um, uh, he, like, finished... He, you know, finished his play... Uh, <sighs> sorry. He finished the footage for a game as general commentary on, like, how it was made and, and its, its general nature. And he goes, Well, I don't like it. <laughs> uh, it's very hard. But I do have to admit that when you die, you never feel like the game is... You, 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 you always feel like it's your fault. You never feel like you died because the collision didn't work correctly, um, because the motion controls didn't work correctly, because you, you hit jump and your character didn't jump. It is mechanically very tight. He didn't say it like this, I'm paraphrasing. It's mechanically very tight. It's, it, you know, you just die constantly, and uh, it's not very much fun. And... I think about the difference there between most hard Japanese games and hard 80s British games. And, and that does include British NES games. Because if you play... Um, call, me a, call me a bastard if you want. Rare is a terrible software developer. The first good Rare game was Donkey Kong Country. Every game they made before that was a pile of shit. Awful games. Everything they made was garbage. Um, I've played all, almost all of it. <laughs> they're NES games. They're not so well-known NES games. They're SNES games. They're computer games. Um, you know, er, you know the rare coin and the ultimate play the game era stuff. It's just slop, in my opinion. Um, and a lot of it suffers from all the problems of the the spectrum. But, for instance, if you play uh, one of their better-known NES games, Wizards and Warriors, that is rare, right? Let me just double-check, but I'm like 90, 90 95, 99% sure. Uh, yes. If you play Wizards and Warriors for the NES, that game sucks. It's not good. It's not good really in any way. It has British Game Syndrome, where there's no internal logic to it, right? Yes, we joke about how in video games, uh, in in uh, in like platform games, the platforms are just floating with no explanation, and there's just items up in the air and whatnot, right? But there is an internal consistency to the way that Mega Man or Super Mario Brothers places items in places. In British games, particularly something like uh, uh, Wizards and Warriors, there's no sense to where the items are. There's no sense to what the items do. There's no clear path forward. You never know what you're supposed to be doing. 
You're always confused. The game is trying to kill you. In Wizards and Warriors, there's a whole bunch of places where if you mess up, you will be humiliated like the bowling alley screen that plays like the skier falling down the slope when you when you roll a gutter ball. The game wants you to feel bad when you fail. That's why it's so infuriating. Re uh, Wizards and Warriors is set up with all these rooms where if you miss a jump, you will have to wait there. Just wait doing nothing, hands off the controller, while you watch your character get humiliated, just thrown back to the beginning of the level, right? There's all these vertical vertical rooms, um, like the one in, I think, the first one, uh, where there's just a whole bunch of slopes. And if you miss a jump anywhere, you'll hit a slope and slide, 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 and just get pachinkoed all the way down to the bottom of the screen. And the whole time you're sitting there just with the sourest face, and you're like, I'm not having fun. This isn't fun. And when you clear it, you don't feel satisfied. There's no satisfaction in it. Um, you're just like, oh, great, I can move on. And everything in the game is like that. It's it's all infuriating. It, it seems like you're being mocked by the game, by the developers. So then you look at Japanese games. You look at Mega Man, and uh, you look at, like, Mega Man, and there's nothing in the game even the very first Mega Man game, but any of them, um, where you look at it and go, I don't know how to do that, or I'm going to get killed by that guy, or whatever, where you're not in the back of your head going, but if I was careful and patient, that wouldn't happen. In Wizards and Warriors, it really looks like there's stuff you just can't do. Like, you'll see an item, you're like, how the hell am I going to get that? And then when you do get it, it turns out to be this, like, speedrun strat thing, where you've got to, like, run up to the edge of a tree and jump off the last pixel and, and, like, juke at the end. And you're like, what? What? That's a that's how you put bonus items in games. That's how you put secret items in games, right? Mega Man doesn't do this, right? You play Contra, you get your ass kicked, right? You just get slaughtered. But every time it happens, you go, if I just turned around and shot the guy, I'd be alive right now. You always blame yourself because the game is hard. Yes, it's Nintendo hard, but it is fair. British games are not fair. This is not fair. Giving you seven lives to get through this room is not fair. And, um, you know, all the British developers were afflicted by this. Um, they, they all had this problem of making games that were, that were uh, not fun, you know, that were not meant to be fun. And it's why I used to dunk on the Spectrum so much, because it is such a British console. Um, console, computer, um, platform, I guess. Um, I used to dunk on the Spectrum so much because I felt like every game for this platform was like this. But what's interesting is, if you've been here for not just this stream, but the last couple, the vast majority of games that I've pulled up haven't really had that energy to them, right? Um, now, mind you, a lot of the more interesting ones actually weren't British. They were Spanish, or uh, Italian, or Polish. Um, and I wonder if there's a certain amount of <laughs> national character, um at fault here. Oh my god, I just figured out this room. I'm so mad. Ugh. Again, there's no accomplishment in it. It doesn't feel like I, I accomplished anything. But I do know how to get out of here. Oh my god. Oh, maybe I don't. No, that's not how you do it either. Okay, now, like... I just paused. Uh, pardon me. I'm gonna rub my eye here. You know, I think, Nadia, that's that's an interesting point. I, I don't know if this is what you meant, but it, an interesting point is you could imagine this being a good room in Mega Man with a, basically the same layout. If you could control your jump height, you know, this would be trivial. No, not trivial. That's the thing. It would still be challenging, but it would be, you would look at it and go, well, I can do that. I'm going to be irritated, but I can do it. But there's just... No, no one here is certain that I will get through this room. N not the least of which me. In fact, I guess I actually am certain that I won't because I'm going to quit now. <clears throat> um, and they made a thousand of them too. I don't know how many of these are real. In this folder here, I've got like Jet Set Willy 2, um, Jet Set Willy in Paris, and a bunch of other stuff. And I think these are all clones. I think these are all unlicensed. But, uh, 
yeah, it, it was just um, – well, I mean, Acrylic, to be fair, uh, you know, it's not even necessarily – you know, I, I've tried to get away from saying British game developers suck, right? That's what I used to say. You know that's not true. You know I don't believe that. Um, it's it's a shorthand because yes, if you if you uh, it's just it's just cultural, right? People will go, uh, oh British, you know British British eighties games. Oh, like the Jet Set Willy, like Manic Miner, like uh, you know Monty on the Run or whatever. Well, those are games that came out that that did get extremely you know very well known but uh they were coming from like two different companies three different companies you know rare made a bunch of stuff um and then it's probably like three developers that made most of the stuff that people name you know if somebody rattles off like 20 zx spectrum games they probably just named the work of like three different people um and 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 it's just so for uh, for instance uh, I can't remember the name, but the guys who made the two brothers, I think, who made the Dizzy series, they love Dizzy. You know, they still love Dizzy. I think they're making a, a Dizzy game right now. They made like twenty of them, and they still want to make more. Um, and the people who bought them, bought those games, seem like are eating it up. They want to buy more of them. They they bought them before. They'll buy them now. Um, <clears throat> yeah, no, that's it. Acrylic has it right. It's not that every British game was bad. It's just that games that were bad in this way couldn't have happened anywhere else. Oliver Twins, there you go. Thank you. Um, the specific socioeconomic circumstances that created games like this, the combination of... I, I'm under the impression, I don't know much about UK history, but I'm under the impression at this time there was probably a recession. Uh, and also that the government at that time was doing the austerity thing. Uh, people didn't have a lot of money. Uh, and so making uh, inexpensive and, uh, <clears throat> pardon me, making inexpensive, uh, you know, games with a lot of yield, yeah, in the 80s, um, making inexpensive games with a lot of yield is sort of like, uh, you know, people in the 40s, people in the 40s wanted to buy craft cheese, you know, they wanted powdered cheese. Because otherwise you just couldn't get much cheese. And your choices were between this salty, you know, orange crap and this much cheddar. What What do you, you know, do you want a cheese sauce or do you want one bite of cheddar? You know, make your... So, uh, between the options, you're going to want the one that... They're playing to the market that, that exists, right? The ZX Spectrum was capable of better games, but those better games require would have requ would have required higher prices. Nobody was going to spend thirty, you know, thirty pounds, I guess, uh, on uh, a ZX Spectrum game. Uh, I, I, that's my impression. I have heard that the prices for games at that time uh, were less than ten bucks or thereabouts. No one was going to spend the thirty pounds it was going to take uh, to make a game that was as good as a NES game, which would have been shorter. To boot, right? Um, Jet Set, Jet Set Willy. The code for jumping in Jet Set Willy, for my money, I would bet that it was written on the first day that the game was being developed and never changed. The code for jumping in Super Mario Brothers was probably being tweaked up until the last day of development. That that would be my bet. Um, I think that the simplicity of this game, it, you know, all the enemies have extremely basic code, right? They only move left, right, up, down. That's it. The only difference between them is their graphics. Well, making art, not that hard. Writing unique enemy motion, whole different ball game, right? A lot of what put Rare on the map, I think, is that Rare had one guy there, I think, who knew, who had been to math class. <laughs> Maths. Maths, plural, class. So if you play rare games, 
Um, I've always made this joke. Again, it's mean spirited, and I should back off on it. But <laughs> I've always made this joke, like, oh, you can tell this is a British game, or you can tell this is a European game because the enemies are moving in uh, sinusoidal patterns. No American developer did that. You know, very few Japanese developers did that. Uh, but there were an. It was just because you had such a limited palette to work with on these 8-bit systems um, and because you were limited so heavily by memory and uh, CPU speed, one thing you could do if you were a boffin, uh, I think is the word, uh, if you knew how to write efficient lookup tables for sinusoidal operations, you could get some really lush you know, gra gravity, gravity and um, vector-based movement, which never got applied to the player character. That's what's infuriating. Um, you look at Japanese games, and uh, you look at, like, Super Mario Brothers, and what makes Super Mario Brothers special, it, you might not realize, is that behind the scenes, Mario's position is not tracked only per pixel. It's tracked per, like, 128th of a pixel. And what that means is that Mario's movement is basically anti-aliased. He, he has movement that is more precise than what is seen on the screen, and that allow, and they're doing vector arithmetic with that, so that when you jump, in this game, when you jump, when you press jump, Jet Set Willy, you know, a, a flag goes on. And for every frame that Jet Set Willy is jumping, he goes up one pixel and left one pixel, and that's it. And that's the only logic. And then after 33 frames, uh, a, a counter reaches its zenith and gets reset to zero and jump turns to off. And then he begins going down and left once per frame. That's it. It is so hard to write good jumping physics that if you just write a game with bad jumping physics and then code around that and design your levels around that, then um, you get a game that is incredibly easy to make, miserable to play, but you can churn it out, right? You can just turn the crank, and you literally, I mean, this is a thing that used to happen with games, and I think it's happened a lot less now. Nowadays, if somebody's making video uh, a video game, if you hire a level designer, they need to know what the game is about. They need to know what the previous level was before they can make a new one. Um, <clears throat> uh, uh, you can't you can't just drop into a modern like first person shooter and just make a new level for it. That that worked for Quake, you know. It's actually a thing that uh back in the back in the day uh when uh, games like Quake were being made, the the developers at id in particular had very different plans for what several of the levels were going to be. And then when those plans changed, they just took those levels and dropped them elsewhere in the game, renamed them. They they have no logical connection to a narrative. But it's okay because the levels are so abstract. Who cares? And during the like Wolfenstein 3D and Doom period, uh, in particular for ID, God, I hate to talk about ID. Ugh, it's so it's been retread so many times, but it's a good example in this case. They were using um, levels that were again very generic, very uh, uh, abstract, I should say, uh, and they didn't have to connect to each other thematically um, or or logically or physically. So there was a point where they just hired American McGee off the street and said we need levels go and just put them in a corner and he just made levels and they didn't have to give him any instructions you know and then at some point they decide like okay we're gonna have three episodes all right we'll just take all the levels that he made that we think are sort of in the same flavor and we'll call those the hell levels and, and that's all they did um so for a game like this for jet set willy you can do that if you want to churn out more levels it is like turning a crank. If you were able to make a sum, you can make more. It's just a question. You just pull the thing up and you go, uh, I'll draw a floor here. And then you you just free associate, right? Your brain goes, oh, what if you put a floor there? <laughs> Let's do that. You know, you just fill the screen with stuff and then you figure out how to plug it together. And so the levels in this game don't have to, you know, very easy to produce, very easy to debug. You don't have, and... You don't have to ask any questions like, ah, shit, what if the player jumps up this way, then jukes midair? Ah, shoot, they can skip this whole room. Well, the player can't do that. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, there you go. Uh, Acrylic, that's, that's exactly what we're talking about. Um, 
yeah, uh, uh, the the speed at which we, these were being developed versus the price they were being sold at was just an incredible ratio, uh, and the amount of and 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 the amount of content people wanted. There was no way for them to be good, you know. And I think um, what's interesting to me is not so much the well-known games, because I think that the well-known games that everyone always names for all the home computer platforms, the really well-known games are the ones that were, uh, that stood out primarily by being good value for money, which is not what makes them good games. It what's, it's what makes them slow, miserable games. Um, <laughs> and, uh, that, that just, that just take forever. And so you get your eight quid worth. So, that's why I that's why I, I steer away from them. But it's it's just um to me it just speaks volumes that Jet Set Willie can't change direction in midair. If he could, this would be a completely different game, you know? It it would change so much. It would complicate the level design tremendously if Jet Set Willie could change direction in midair. Or if he could limit his jumps, right? That would if you look at a Mega Man level, for instance. It's really hard to come up with a level in Mega Man where you can't look at it and instantly know the critical path through it. Just just shoot straight through. Um, the only thing that really gets in your way is whether you have enemies, whether you've got um, moving platforms. And so that's why Japanese games start to have to come up with physics systems, you know, um, when at the same time, uh, you know, the, the British or the UK ones weren't. Because they had made the motion so good, they had made the mechanics so good that um, if they just gave you a platformer like Super Mario Brothers um, and didn't start adding more and more and more things to it, new enemies to avoid and whatnot, uh, you just very quickly get so good at it, you could just blaze through it without even thinking, you know? And that so you know that sort of culminated in like the SNES era when they put out Super Mario World the box for Super Mario World i think says that it has 96 levels <clears throat> and you look at that and you're like can that be true but it is but if you play it you, you know you don't really you don't really find yourself going ugh, this again all the levels feel unique you know whereas with this one once you've seen one room you've really seen them all in, this room contains every mechanic this game has, as far as I know. Enemy move up, down. Enemy move left, right. Stairs. That's it. <laughs> oh, man. Heavens to Murgatroyd. I need a drink. Y yeah? Hang on a second. What? So I just, uh, so, okay, I just dropped in this game. This is Joe Blade, 1987, published by Players. Um, written by Colin Swinborne, remixed by Fluffy. Is this a modern day crack? Hang on. No, because this is cracked by some other guy. So I guess it really does say remixed by Fluffy. That is weird terminology for 1987. I mean, the word remix existed, but... Hmm. 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 Okay. Um. Oh. <coughs> Pardon me. I need to restart my emulator because my uh, joystick powered off my gamepad. Uh, OP. QA. Space. Got it. Start. Oh, hello. Oh, fuse is still muted. Shoot. There's probably no audio, but still. Okay, I seem to have unlimited ammo. How I go in? Maybe I came out. Maybe I'm supposed to go to the left. Found the cell key. Okay. Oh no, there is there is limited ammo. Ah oh, shoot. Well, so I have a key. But I don't know... Oh, okay. I found a hostage. My gun's empty. 
Oh no. My gun's still empty. Oh boy. <coughs> uh, I'm just using a 360 gamepad. It's the most convenient thing. Good scoring. Okay, let's try this again. Well, let's be a little... Menu music. Alright, let's try this again. Let's be a little more careful with our ammo. I wish... Is that colored bar there? Is that my, um... Is that my ammo indicator? I wonder. Nope, that's my life indicator. Oh, I didn't actually expect that door to open. So I guess that's what I use my keys for. Oh my god, this is one of those games where... Okay. <sighs> this one's not very good. <laughs> Give me a second. Uh, this game's not very good, uh, in my opinion. And yeah, hmm, that's an interesting... <clears throat> Fop and plop. You have raised an interesting uh, assertion. <laughs> okay. Truths of the 80s home computer game era. One, very reasonable. You are supposed to read the manual, dumbass. If you don't read the manual, you won't know how to play the game. That's that's what the game is for. Uh, that's what the manual is for. Another thing, though, is... God, I think a lot of games wanted you to draw a map. And my opinion on this... This is, um, this is interesting. So, uh, I'm going to again pause this game and just uh, stemporaneize for a while. But I'm going to get a beer first. Hold up. Beer be... Hand check. Boop, boop. Crushed raspberry sour. It's almost the only thing I drink these days. Hopefully this doesn't overflow. Uh, hacker. Which hacker are you referring to? You're not talking about the... Uh... Yeah, which hacker are you talking about? <sighs> oh, I need to restart my emulator. That was Joe Blade. We're going to play Joe Blade 2 next. Um, <clears throat> when, uh, <clears throat> uh, whenever I think about Hacker, I think about Steve Jackson's Hacker, uh, which uh, a friend introduced me to many years ago and turned out to be my favorite uh, board game um, because <clears throat> uh, Steve Jackson... Steve Jackson was making a game, I don't remember what it was, and then due to some, like, satanic panic about hackers at the time, uh, his company got raided by the FBI uh, because they thought he was making a game that would uh, correctly instruct someone on how to become a hacker, which was not true. Um, so he got mad about this and decided to make a game that would do that, and he did, and he succeeded, and it was very good. Um, and it's a tabletop game where you have a de it's, it's all cards, um, but you have a deck of cards uh, which represent computer systems from various corporations, government agencies, and you have to you begin the game by laying them out on the table to form a network of interconnected systems. And then the uh, the goal, uh, or sorry, the uh, the gameplay loop is that you like 
attempt to hack a system through a uh, dial-in number. Like you've 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 war dialed and you found a phone number that connects to a modem, uh, which you have found out belongs to like a major bank, uh, and then you get into this unprotected system, and then from there, you can then uh, work on that system further in order to get root uh, on the machine. This came out in like 1990 or something, by the way. Uh, and then from from there, that gives you access to connection info for other systems, like government agencies that have uh, interop with the bank. Uh, and you can then, that gives you uh, assistance getting into their machines, and eventually you could take over the entire network. It is actually a pretty reasonable facsimile of hacking, um, you know, the real thing. Uh, and he did successfully sell this, and it's also a lot of fun. So... Big ups for Steve Jackson. Hope he's not a racist because uh, I'm very impressed by the one thing I know about him. Anyway, yeah, so I always liked the Mist series, but I wasn't able to get through Mist 1 by myself, which I later found out it's largely because Mist 1 is kind of bullshit. And then Riven. <laughs> I've heard people could get through Riven on their own without a walkthrough. I don't. I do believe them, but I don't believe them. It's hard for me to comprehend that that could be possible. But, uh, so I couldn't, I just wandered around. I, I wandered around in Riven for a decade, basically, before I, I gave up on it. And, um, uh, uh, then I got to Miss 3. Miss 3 came out. And I was a little older than I was the last time I tried a Mist game. I was like 14, something like that. And uh, I decided, for reasons I don't know, I used to be very impatient, incredibly impatient with video games. Um, and I only really figured out how to get better about that when I was in like my mid to late 20s. Uh, so I used to never finish any game, anything. The first video game I ever finished, I think I was at least 25. Um, and it was just because I wasn't patient. I would just give up on things. Uh, I would just get frustrated, and I just, I literally learned that I could tell myself, don't do that, and then not do it anymore. But Myst 3 was one of the first games where I ever said, you know what, I'm going to finish this, and I'm, gonna, and I'm going to do it correctly, and I'm going to have a good time, as the developers intended. And so I got a notebook, and I drew maps, and I wrote down hints, and I just, I did it diegetically, as if I was the character in the game, and it worked perfectly, it was completely immersive. It was the most fun I've ever had with a video game. I think I finished it in, uh, I think I finished it in, uh, uh, a day. I think I actually launched that game and pounded through it by just 100% dedicating myself. Mist 3 Exile. Good game. Doesn't really hold up all that well. But a lot of British games. Seems like an awful lot of British games. Like all those awful isometric, um, games i think you were supposed to make a map and i can't on the one hand i feel like you know if i made myself do it if i got some like grid paper and rotated it 45 degrees and just told myself listen you son of a bitch you are going to have a good time i could do it and i think the reason i'm not is because i don't believe that there's a payoff that's worth it the mechanics for the games also suck the the input mechanics and, and motion mechanics are terrible but I just don't believe it could be worth it. And it sucks, because if it were, if I felt that it was worth it, those games would probably be pretty cool. But I know they're not going to contain anything like a cool narrative or anything. They're just going to be abstract rooms with the same 13 sprites moving on a linear pass. <laughs> Joe Blade 2. Joe Blade 2. Kempston. Uh, the game. Alright, this is Joe Blade 2. Whoa. What? I can't... Oh! Whoa! Okay, this is different. So, I killed one of them. Also, there's a 10-minute ti time limit. How did I kill that guy? What are the numbers in the lower left? Or they're not numbers. What the hell? There we go. Oh, did I did I kick him? Is that the situation? Come on. Ah. Yeah, I don't know. Well. 
I'm like collecting trash cans? What? What's going on here? Oh. Whoa, what? 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 What's going on here? Man, I don't know. Oh. All right, so this one's not good. That was from 88. It's the year I was born. Joe Blade 3. That's him. That's Joe Blade. <sighs> Kempston. <laughs> Here we are again, back on the stage of history. Uh, but we have an ammo counter this time. Man, they made four of these. Beep, beep. Whoa! Whoa! Well, well, there seem to be some emulation accuracy issues. Because all of my left sprites are correct are uh, are corrupted. Oh, and now all my right sprites are corrupted, and my left ones are mostly corrupted. Well, this is badass. Man, somewhere uh, data erase just like woke up in a cold sweat. Like I'm needed somewhere, but where? I guess I have a disguise, so maybe I don't need to fight them. Every time I move rooms, it just, like, corrupts in a different way. Oh, man, that's so good. All right, well, anyway, Joe Blade 2. That was Joe Blade 3. Now, 1991, Joe Blade 4. Oh, shit. I'll be back. Sorry, today has been a rough day. There was a very concerning sound from upstairs. Uh, I, honest to God, I just heard the exact... If you ask yourself, what does it sound like for someone to fall down the stairs and break their neck? I heard that. It was um, a kitty that got stuck in the hand loop on a paper bag. And somehow managed to produce the exact sound effect which everyone in my house perceived as the precise sound of someone falling down the stairs. Whoa. Whoa. There was also some screaming. Uh, anyway. It was Sarah. All right, um, let me get this together. Man, I, yeah, they've just, they've, they, dang it, they did it again. It's the same game. And, 
again, it's it's one of those things where like you don't want to be you don't want to be too critical because you don't know how much of it you know you don't know what someone else's perspective is like but you just look at this and you're like man it sucks that it sucks that people were excited about this i'm sorry (laughs) i apologize for what a mean thing that is to say but oh man have better standards uh jockey wilson's darts challenge which there was a follow-up to this called jockey wilson's compendium of darts anyway let's look at this darts game um up to the oak oach Och? oh is that is that written in like a sort of a scottish accent or something um anyway it, hey gibbs you need to lay down lay down please god you're in the way Um, oh my god. <laughs> um, okay, all this iconography is good, but can I bring your attention to the lower left icon? <laughs> somebody sent me, uh, somebody sent me the like, you know, somebody sent me a meme image that looked exactly like that earlier. That's the joke. Uh, anyway, how do we, hmm. Joystick doesn't work. Nothing works. Nothing works. Well, delightful. Uh, no, trust me, this cat, year-round, this cat is, is in my way. Okay. Doesn't work as a Sinclair joystick either. Doesn't work there either. Uh... How about cursor? Doesn't work there either. Yeah, I don't know what to do. Yep, so joystick just doesn't work. Nothing works. I want to play Jockey Wilson Dart Challenge. Let's try this other dump. Oh. Figured something out. Oh. 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 Okay. N and J for up and down. Right, now give me those sweet left and rights. There we go. K and K. There's got to be a button for going left. Really? Okay. Oh. Wait, is that a mode sl- Oh! When I press, like, the comma key, it makes those keys stop working. It must be cycling through, like, key layouts. Ah, this is so strange. All right, well, anyway. Um, S. So S is probably start, I would guess. And then that would seem to be... Oh, there we go. Kempston. And there we go. Okay. And now if we go up... Oh, I see. That's select. Okay. Ah. Uh, one player. Go. Oh boy, that was a lot. That was a lot. All right, let's play Dorts. I've played this before. I wonder if I played this on stream. There we go. I bulged that eye. Oh. Oh, wait, really? Are we really getting a replay from a different perspective? That's cute. And that's it. That's Jockey Wilson's Darts Challenge. Oh, yeah, I don't, I don't know, I don't know darts. Is it just me or is that a much less flattering depiction of Jockey Wilson? I mean, I'm just saying, like, 
They sort of drew him with, like, Peter Griffin ass, if you ask me. Maybe he looks that way. Oh, maybe that was the CPU playing. Huh. That would make sense, because I was sort of sitting there going like, hey, aren't we taking turns? What? Did we not start? Kempston, one player. What? Okay. And then we play. There we go. I guess there's something wrong with this. Okay. Um, well, I'll tell you what. Um, I'm tired, and it's really warm in here. And I just realized I've been doing this for uh, four and a half hours. I, it's probably a good idea for me to go. Um, so thank you so much, everyone. Really love you. Uh, really, really uh, love that you all came. Um, boy, I'm, I'm tired enough. I can't. I, I, yes, I love you all. I am married to everyone here. Um, no, I, uh, uh, I'm very tired. Uh, I got a bail. Um, uh, next time I do this, the one thing I, I've been trying to do is, like, if I'm going to stream ZX Spectrum games, I should do them at a time that works for people in the UK. And it seems like I did at least, I did at least, uh, uh, pick a good time for a bunch of people here, um, but what I really intended to do was to start at, like, 8 my time. That's what I'd like to have done. And um, uh, I should either do that or do it later in the day so people in the U.S. could join. But, like, I sort of picked the worst possible time to do this. Uh, well, not the worst, because obviously people did get to join. Um, but anyway, thank you all for coming. I'm very tired, uh, so I'm going to go. And hopefully I will have a new video up on my channel soon instead of just streams. Thanks, everyone. Enjoy the rest of your Sunday.